And we are live and back. Last interview of the day, day four of the ultimate raw vegan bundle. Really, really stoked. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, now is the time because it's only available until the 11th. We're talking 40 raw vegan resources from some of the biggest, best, most lively, alivened, passionate people in the raw food movement, sharing the things they absolutely love, the things that have helped them out that they know can help you. We're talking $1,850 worth of stuff for just 50 bucks. Today we're bringing in Nate, the man, Raw Natty Nate. He's got a really awesome course that's a part of the bundle right now and it's worth more than the course itself, by itself, will be after this. Yeah, we're talking about Raw Vegan Kitchen Essentials. It's really awesome, it's a full e-course. We're gonna go into that, but uh, we're also gonna go into setting up your raw kitchen and your successful life. I, I kinda said that wrong. Setting up your raw kitchen and life for success. That's it. So I'm gonna see if he's in here. We'll invite him in. You can grab this bundle in his bio, link in bio. If you're not following, if you're like, yeah, these guys, whatever, but go to him, give him a follow, grab the bundle, or if you want, you can in line. But it's only here until the 11th. It's only once a year, and it's all completely brand new. Nate, what's going on, man? What's up, brother? I'm doing pretty damn good, man. I'm doing. I'm on a couple hours of sleep, but I'm feeling great. No way, bro. What time is it for you over there? Uh, it's 5 o'clock. 5 p.m.? Yeah, 5 p.m. What, what are you at? You're like freaking like 8? No, 10. Yeah. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're just fresh up and you're just yeah. getting your sunshine right beside your sprouts. You're just uh, sprouting up right, right now. Exactly. Like, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> when, when you sit in front of that, do you kind of feel like you kind of sprouting up? You're like, Woo! Sometimes, bro, you know what I need to get is I need to get one of those red lights to add in that other aspect of the spectrum. I, okay, I'll lift this. Up. Look at this action over here. I got my, my red lights oh, over there. Yes. Then I got some over there. And so yeah, good, those red lights, bro. they kick some butt, man. They are pretty damn awesome. Yeah, we got to get one of those set. That's the next thing we got to set up. Pretty soon we're going to have to get a bigger place because we're not going to have room for all these cool gadgets and things. But yeah, man, you definitely the red light, light, man, amazing. Do you use it like for, for uh, swelling and pain or do you use it more for skin health or what do you use the red light mostly for? Yeah, I mean, skin energy. Is, yeah, skin, energy. It would be cool. We don't have anything big. We just have like a handheld little like spotlight kind of thing. And, you know, every once in a while I'll use it like, you know, on my face. Lissa uses it for her face. But yeah, I don't, I haven't used it for any pain or swelling or anything. But because it doesn't like, I mean, do yours get pretty warm? Dude, you got to check out some TheraBulb. I mean, I'll, I'll do a shameless yeah. plug here. I am an affiliate for them. You can grab it through my link and stuff like that. I have it in my, normally I have it in my link in bio. Right now it's just all about bundle, but um, I can hook you up. They're, they're non-toxic, really high quality, and you nice. can get varying temperatures. You can get the LEDs. That you can okay. just put right on if you want. Gotcha. You can also get the ones that are like 350 watts and like you get toasty. Like you, you go like this close to or like, no, about a foot and a half. Yeah. And it's amazing how good it feels. I, I usually put them behind me and do yoga. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, yeah, that would be nice to get a little system going. I know I've seen you, you know, post in your stories about them. And, yeah, that's the one thing that, in a way, I feel like could be really leveling up is having that, yeah, getting that warmth, man. Like, yeah, exactly. Loosening up. You get loosened up, man. Like, woo. It's crazy, though, honestly. Like, I mean – whether I'm just waking up and I want to utilize it to wake up and feel loosey goosey, get a good sweat because you get like a really deep sweat because it penetrates deep in, you know, that's the only penetration. I mean, anyways, um, but it, it makes me feel really, really good. But even after like a skate session or something, mm -hmm. if I'm like sore and hurt, right. I put yeah. it on the joints and it's like amazing. So good. Awesome. Very and, cool. that, It's fun to find these game changers and, you know, yeah. We can jump some into it. There's so many things I'd like to talk to you about. And, uh, you know, we've got to do this again sometime. Excellent. But Definitely. I count you and Lissa as, like, some of the, like, really cool gadget game changers and, like, the most <laughs> amazing setup in the house. Like, if I could just grab you and then force you to do it all in my house, too, then right. I'd be like, I, I just wish. And otherwise, oh. I'm inspired by you, and I'm going to start doing more of it myself once I get more of a stable setup. Nice. Right now, yeah. I'm kind of hopping places. But Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, hey, may the 4th be with you, yes. all of you out there. This is amazing. Absolutely. It's May the 4th. I didn't realize until I went to find you a gift, and I was like, oh, it's May the 4th. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. I love May the 4th, and that reminds me, I think that I'm 
one episode behind in the Mandalorian, I believe. Oh. So I'm going to be checking that out tonight later. I'm going to make space for it for Very May the cool. 4th. Very cool. Even if it means I sleep a little less, I got it. That's a great uh, goal to have. We need to tap. We haven't watched the Mandalorian in, in, I don't know. Is there more than one season? There's obviously yeah, more than yeah. one season. Three? If I'm not mistaken, I think it's on season three or three. maybe okay. season two. I but we only saw the good. first season. It was so good. So good. But that ends, yeah, we've right? been that... over these past couple of years, Lissa has really, um, she's, she's turned me into a Trekkie and she's really it's not a hard horizon thing. to the stars. Oh my gosh, man. Like Star Wars is amazing and all the different aspects of Star Wars is pretty cool. But Star Trek is so deep. It's just so like, I don't even know. I don't even, yeah, I saw, I saw that, man, that is so awesome. Picard. Oh my God, that's totally Picard, man. And then, yeah, the Picard, we just finished up Picard, kind of sad. So now we're like, all right, we got to figure out what to, how to watch everything in chronological order from start to finish. We're finishing up Deep Space Nine and we've got a couple other things. Like Lisa's like, oh, we got to watch this. Oh, we got to watch that. I'm like, all right, it's so deep. Like it, it's, it it's like, it's wholesome. It's very deep, and I feel like there's so many, so many things to pull from that show that that we could implement into our own lives, or even how to kind of. I mean, there's like the Ferengi. It's just so cool because like the Ferengi is kind of like that side of us that is into <laughs> marketing and you know yeah. rules of acquisition. Like, how can we? It's so funny. There's, it's like there's the way that they put it together. Yeah, Gene, man, Gene Roddenberry is next level. That guy. He was an incredible, he, he, he must have some downloads he's getting from yeah. somewhere because how does he come up with these stories? But I, yeah. I definitely count him as a prophet. You know, I think he's in, in yeah. some ways a prophet and it's, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I would actually accredit Star Trek to really forming a lot of my ethics, you know, like it's something yeah. I grew up on and oh, like they just take main archetypes, right? Like major archetypes and just like really dive into them and like, show them on their extremes and it, it, it yeah. yeah it's an amazing show right. it is an amazing show yeah but of course may the 4th we've got uh you know the star <laughs> wars theme today so we'll pay homage there because star wars is also an amazing story and and, and yeah, yeah that's fun one too yeah, yeah super Absolutely. super cool you know, i just gotta say you're gonna you're gonna feel a little bit jealous probably I haven't watched any of the new season of Picard yet. I'm waiting, so I'm, I got that whole new season to watch. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, you're gonna be able to binge. It's so incredible. It's like, it's interesting how like shows or even songs, of course, pull at us in some way to where you can't help it. You're like, what's happening to me? Why am I crying? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it just is, man, it, I mean, if you have watched other, like if I didn't watch any other previous seasons of, you know, say Next Gen or any of these, mm -hmm. you know, other seasons, Voyager, I wouldn't have, I don't feel like the same kind of connection with no. that series because, but man, it is, they did, they did such a good job. Oh my gosh, you're in for such a treat, bro. It's going to be next level. You're, yeah, it's, it's going to pull your heartstrings. You're going to uh it's just next generation uh, next level next generation man it's like yeah i grew up on next generation that's my my uh my bananas and dates as they say and nice. i yeah yeah I, I, yeah it's one of those things right when you really start to know the characters and they have such a good yeah. character development you just yeah you become attached in a way and right. then, yeah it's, it's so fun to see them older and to see that continuation of the story you never thought would happen right. you know yeah, that's, that's how Lissa is, too. She's like, sometimes I would just have it playing in the background. You know, like, some people have, like, the football game or, you know, baseball just or come, something in the background. Like a lullaby. Yeah, it would just be <laughs> next gen in the background, you know. So, yeah, she has, you know, definitely. And that's really helped me because she's been able to pause the show and kind of give me some context. Mm -hmm. And it's really, like, she's really brought me into that culture and, now I understand. I'm like, yeah. wow, I never knew. I always thought it was like nerdy and I just, I never went there and even like gave it a time of day. I'd watch an episode or two of the original old school yeah. series, the sixties. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. But of course there's some cool concepts. And I mean, wow, yeah. like how much have we, I don't know if this is true, but they say the military 
is anywhere from 50 to, this is hard to believe, 300 years uh, more, more advanced than the general population. Yeah. So it makes me wonder, like, I mean, were they pulling from this or was this stuff already out? Like, you know, the data pad. The, yeah. the, you know I mean? the like, iPads everyone has, yeah. Yeah, like it's just. <laughs> so incredible man it's so so incredible yeah just genius show but picard man they did such yeah. an amazing job it's ai it, yeah it's beautiful <laughs> it's really it, and then of course yeah the, it's it's just a crazy this this story i mean of course what's cool is you know they leave it open <laughs> right yeah. so there you know you know there's going to be more and i mean we're begging for it. like i'm like we need to write and be one of the people that write in and say continue on please give us more because it is just so entertaining and it just it's captivating yeah it's, it's inspirational too right because it really plays upon you know the darker sides and the lighter sides and that we right. have choice and you know like it just it's just yeah it's just so amazing because the concepts and the things they bring forth could have been brought forth in such a way that it's corny and feels like lame kind of like I could get completely smashed for saying this, but something like Christian rock or something, which sure. obviously you can find some good ones, but sometimes it doesn't, it's not that good, right. you know, but, right. but it's amazing. It's just like, it's like the best, it's the best. Everyone's leaving. Wow. We still got a lot of people here. I thought everyone would be like Star Trek. <laughs> we came here for other stuff. What are you guys uh, talking man. about? <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, that's good. You know, we got, we, we cleared out all the, all the, we, we needed them out and then we got the hard cores here with us. Oh, yeah, exactly. Man. Exactly. So, well, so you know, check we, it out. I'm not really sure if you're, doing any, if you're doing any sprouting. We got some some fresh sprouts going because yeah, we, want, we like to add these to your stew. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some mung beans and mm -hmm. some lentils here right now. We just started these. I, did a, I didn't realize that we actually scheduled today's in because it was a little mm -hmm. miscommunication. I should have clarified when we were doing the DMs because you're like, oh, too slow. It's already in there. I had pictured that you had already had a scheduled live with someone else. Oh, oh no. Yeah. So I, it's like, good I already put it in. Yep. So it's a good thing you had that story that you tagged me in, like going live with Nate. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going live tomorrow? Because I've been doing this grow long series at 8 a.m. So we oh, started no. these yesterday. We started soaking these yesterday and they're totally ready to eat now. And uh, yeah, of course, that's that's something I'm, I'm always trying to geek out on and inspire people to start sprouting because it doesn't take yeah. any work. You just soak yeah. them overnight. And then look at these. These are totally ready to eat now. And we just started soaking them yesterday morning, drained them out last night. I love them. And, and they're ready to throw in lunch today. I, you know, like, I think that's sometimes a misconception. A lot of people might think that you need to sprout them until they're like a certain length, but a lot of them, they're great once they've really been soaked and just given a yeah. little bit of time. And like, yeah. I, I sometimes like them shorter like that, but it depends yeah. on the recipe. Yeah, listen, I really like them where they're just like this, where the radical is like barely just popping out. Like if anything, these ones yeah. haven't popped yet. By the end of today, they'll be popped, but they're perfect for the stews and the chilies. Yeah. Because they're not a sprout. It's just, it's like you're having a bean in there, right? Yeah, then these mung beans, you can see, I don't know if you can see, there's like a couple little radicals coming yep. out. Now nah, they're tiny, yep. but they're so soft and ready. But yeah, you know, I know it's, that's the thing is like, if you don't know, sometimes it can be a little intimidating. You're like, oh, sprouting, that's weird. Like, how does that work? There's science involved, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, you know, you soak it overnight, rinse and drain for a day, boom, done. So I wanted to bring those in to show because we, like I said, we started these yesterday on the grow along mm -hmm. and we got these cool little sprouting uh, kits. Right. Listen, got these last Christmas. We got two of them and they look really sleek on the, on the counter. They're really clean, mm -hmm. stainless steel screen lid. Nice. You know, it comes with like a, a wider jar, but it's basically like a wide mouth mason jar. Mm -hmm. And man, I know these things here, we've been just keeping going like, 24 seven mm -hmm. sprouts nonstop. I'm, I'm, I'm in this world. I'm not sprouts nonstop, but I got four sprouting jars and I've been utilizing them a bunch. And I, I like to make a huge quantity. And then as you've seen, mm -hmm. put them in the freezer. I wanted yes. to ask, does that, does that make you a little bit sad that I, I, I halt the, the process of the growing and I put them in the freezer? No, no? I love that. <laughs> I love that. We do the same, man. Cause like it, 
Well, for one, it's a great way to preserve it. If you're, you know, it's good to do a, a, a bulk batch, like sprout a bunch, and then you don't have yeah. to sprout. You toss them in the freezer. You could even, um, we've even portioned them out sometimes to where you just thaw that bag, that little baggie, and then you've got the portion ready to go. And it does, I feel like um, it changes the, the structure a little bit as well, right? Because mm -hmm. the yeah. freeze like expands it and then, it, you know, it's just a little softer. Yeah. 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 It's super fun. What What is your favorite bean sprout these days? Probably the mung bean. Yeah, they're so good and so consistent too. Yeah, eh? they're so consistent. It's really cheap. I love the flavor. It's a pretty mild flavor. Not a lot of uh, kind of, you know, that like starchy kind of pasty that you might get yeah. like from like a, gar a garbanzo or an azuki. Yeah. Um, and they're easy. They're mm. so easy. Like, the, the garbanzos and the azukis actually sometimes they they'll can weird, smell. Yeah, they get that smell. Um, yeah. So, like, I mean, like, I don't know, you're doing the same, like, just 24 hours or a little bit more and then freezing them? You know, it's kind of funny. I, I found that I can't find rhyme or reason why sometimes they go off and sometimes they don't. And I don't know if it's the jar or if it's the specific um, beans mm. themselves or... Yeah if I didn't rinse them fast enough or what, but what I typically do with the Izuki and the chickpea is I, I watch them a little more carefully. I usually rinse them a little bit better. Um, and yeah. yeah, often too, I don't sprout them quite as long. Um, some, sometimes just like the lentils even actually like, uh, or the mungs actually I'll I'll soak them overnight and then use them for dinner the next day, you know, and, yeah. and otherwise just freeze them at, at dinner the next day, just kind of do like a 36 hour sprout or 20, no, 24 hour sprout kind of thing. 24 hour sprout. I'm going to freeze them. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what we've been doing. We have some, some Mizuki, but I, I mean, really like the lentils, the different mm -hmm. lentils. The, we have like four different lentils, the green, the regular, the, uh, the beluga. And um, yeah, those are fail proof as well. They don't have a smell. They taste really good, consistent. But I do love the bean, the Mizuki and the garbanzo bean for certain things and having them in yeah. certain things. But yeah. yeah, we don't sprout those as often. And, and I can see why some people would be a little apprehensive to, to do sprouts because they might be smelling them and they're like, ooh, this, how is this supposed to smell? This smells yeah. really weird, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and so, smell like natto. You don't, you don't want them to smell like natto unless you uh, utilize right. that, uh, that fermenting agent. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> natto is definitely, that's something that we've actually just started tapping into this last year a little bit. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a very unique flavor for sure. I love it. I'll admit, I I love natto, but I've 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 always liked strange and potent flavors. You know, like when I was young, I I just eat olives nonstop. I used to love olives and eat the whole thing, right? Yeah. And I can still get some really tasty olives. I have some in my book, and I got links towards uh, some of the best places to get really good quality salt and oil free raw olives. Um, nice. They're not affiliate links either. They're just they're just links because that's they're what I found. Yeah, but um, yeah, like I mean, from noni to to natto to what's another stinky one, durian to durian. you know, like yeah. all the potent stuff. Right, I, I really enjoy it. We actually just met um, this company. I don't know if it's maybe it's natto ninja, but at the expo, and they do mm. like a dried natto, and they have like a wasabi flavor, real wasabi. Oh my gosh, bro. They're like, it's like corn nuts, like a, a nice yeah. crunch. And you know, you've got yeah. that natto flavor, but they're great for, you know, s s like trails or if you're out, like say you're out skating for the day, you can throw a couple yeah. in your pack, your pouch, you know, or your pocket, a little fun, crunchy snack. Yeah. Not as slimy either, right? No, because they're dry. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. um, John we have Fuller actually brought ones. me onto natto. Who did? John Kohler. Okay, and gotcha. Yeah. You want to hear a funny story? I've never told anyone in my life. You guys are the oh. first to hear it. Oh, yeah. So I remember, Here. when was it? I don't even know. It was a long ass time ago that John Kohler introduced me to Natto. We were at like um, one of the one of the fruit festivals and he was just talking about it. He's like, oh, you should try this. It's really good and that and this and that, right? And I was like, yeah. but it's a cooked bean that's fermented. Like it's a live food, but it's cooked. And I was like, I don't know. I don't want to do that. I was very, like, very uh, pure-minded, strict-minded at that point, you know, like, I don't know, maybe yeah. eight years ago. And I remember I went to Hawaii, and I was cruising around, and in Hawaii, they had a store that had natto, and I was like, ooh, I'm like, 
okay, I'll be a yeah. bad kid. I thought I was being a bad kid having natto. So I took it and I sat on the street corner and had like a little thing of natto. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And I like, I didn't love it that time. Yeah. I, I didn't hate it, but I was just like, this is weird, you know? Weird. Yeah, and then it's weird. Years later, um, and that was, I just tried it that one time. But then years later, I saw him at the Canada Fruit Fest. And we were talking again. I, I always love talking with John. It's so awesome that he's a part of the bundle this yeah. time with the contribution so awesome. and the appetizer book. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's gold. But um, yeah, we were talking about natto and he mentioned the freeze dried natto. Mm -hmm. And he had a link to get just bags. It was like, I think I bought a kilogram bag of freeze dried natto for like 90 bucks or something. Wow. And it was awesome. I mean, I would just put it like, I just sprinkle it on top of stews because back, I've, I've made stews forever. Not as not quite as fancy as the ones now. My, my right. go to stew, the first recipe in my book that I, I've had that recipe literally that's been like my go-to or like five days a week for some years i had that you know whenever i could um, which one was that long as good tomatoes that's um it's called my go-to stew go to <laughs> stew <laughs> i go because it's what i've made the most i think i, I could probably say like my go-to stew my uh cocoa butter veggies um presto pesto which is just a simple pesto and um and a weird weird one that is grapes with oranges, oranges and spinach blended together, poured over top of grapes. I'd wow. say those are probably my most eaten five recipes in the last 15 years. And um, That's awesome. super fun. But the, that freeze dried natto, man, I was really sad when I finished it. So I was just putting handfuls in dishes and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, that was probably, I guess, second Canada Fruit Fest. So that was probably uh, four years ago. 2018 or was it 2019? 2019. 2019. Okay, so yeah. the one that we were there together then that year. Yeah, so, so, well, can you get more? Can you still get well, it? That's the sad thing is I, 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 like I looked through my emails and I yeah. checked it out and I couldn't find it again. Like, I don't know gotcha. if they closed shop or what, but I, I would love to try and find that again. It was really I'll tasty, ask, but I get the fresh stuff out John. here sometimes. I'll Sorry? ask John for. I'll ask John and see what he says. Maybe he knows. I'm sure he probably knows. You know what happened to the the company, the owner, or whatever. You know. T tell yeah. him the first time I had Nato, I was by myself and I felt like I was a really naughty boy. <laughs> okay, I'll let him know. I'll let him know. Yeah, it's it's an interesting food, but of course, you know, when you start to dig into good, rich sources of K2 out there, it's it's one of the highest sources of of K2. So you're like, well, okay, we should. Yeah, we should we should start incorporating more natto into our life, right? We want that K two. We want good bone health and, and you yep. know, yeah, skin and, and nails and all these things. Like it's just another aspect to add to our diet. And like you said, you know, it's interesting how we can feel kind of naughty, you know, in a way. But it's a it's a living food, man. It's like amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it comes down to to what foods you genuinely enjoy, you know, like, I'll be honest, I wouldn't eat natto for K2 if I didn't genuinely enjoy it. Like, yeah. I, I wouldn't at all. But yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, the foods you genuinely enjoy that you feel good after eating and not in a, like a stimulatory way or anything like that, right? right. Like, right. I, I think that's a, a great kind of direction that, to go. And that's huge. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. for Dr. Rick and Karen Dina, Karen loves it. But Rick's yeah. like, ugh, I can't stand it. The smell, the look, you, everything. Oh, Rick, so, yeah. yeah. So he just does not eat it at all. But Karen just, you know, she'll just sit there and eat it up. Yeah. The way that we, you know, and I think that this is the way that it comes, the majority of the time it's frozen, right? Yeah. You just yeah. thaw it out when you want to use it. And of course, we've blended it up into some dressings before too. Um, yeah, I have to say, we've only had three of your recipes out of the Cravings Busters, but the Irish stew, bro. Oh, man. I don't know what it is about that flavor combination, but I'm like, this is something I want to have, like, at least once a week. This is so good. And then, of course, you know, throwing in more sprouted lentils or beans just mm -hmm. adds to, uh, it was so good, bro. Yeah, excellent book, man. So excited to to be able to tap into that. Thanks, brother. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I, I really, with that book, what I wanted to try and do is take meals that are this big and condense them to this this size and like yeah. take the flavor like this and go like this, yeah. right? And just uh, make it hearty and easy and, yeah. and, you know, really reminiscent of the classics around the world for, you know, really yeah. popular stews. 
Yeah, it's all about that flavor profile. Yeah. And then, of course, the tricks of freezing the vegetables. I feel like, you know, there's, there's, I mean, obviously, there's lots of people that don't understand the, the, what it does when you freeze a vegetable, right? Like, mm -hmm. say, like a sweet potato or a, or something rather like that. Like, it makes it actually a pretty palatable, decent yeah. pal palatable, you know, or different, yeah. like, like the cauliflower. I mean, it just has this amazing texture. And I know we get people all the time like, oh, you freeze it. And so you break it down, like why you want to freeze it and then yeah. thaw it, right? It's still, it's still raw and yeah. it tastes like it's been steamed, right? Yeah. yeah. And then with all the it's other stuff. such seasons, a fun way, right? Fun such way, a fun way to yeah. add different textures. And yeah, that's, sorry, what it's, sorry. that's what it's all about. Definitely like adding those different textures because like with Lissa's hand salad book, oh my gosh, man. Like... I'm I'm starting a I'm starting a wrap tonight and I I wanted to ask yeah um does do her wrap recipes do they make one or two wraps two yes yeah they make two because I bought the ingredients for Perfect. it just right off the thing and then I was like and then my friend was talking like I kind of want to like come over and eat some of the food you're making and I was like yeah if it only makes one wrap I'm sorry dude if Michelle's watching sorry brother but if it was one wrap you might get a bite but with two wraps. Two wraps. So yeah, the recipe makes two full wraps. And what's cool is how we all put in the weight for yeah. the recipe. So no matter yeah. whose recipe you're following in the bundle, what you get in the bundle, you know that it's going to turn out perfect following yeah. that, that weight because that's universal around the, you know, what's one small onion? I always kind of didn't like that when somebody's like, use a small no. onion. I'm like, well, how much is a small onion? Like I've got an onion this big and I've got a small onion that's this big. You know, it's like, yes. so the weights really help. And then of course they turn out just perfect. And listen, I, we made, um, we made some wraps the night before last night, mm -hmm. right? Cause then they go all night long. The next day yeah. by basically like by lunchtime, they're ready to wrap. So we wrapped up one, ate it, we each ate half, and now we have another whole one to split today. And we're like, we could make more wraps tonight. Basically, yeah. we could be having wraps like for lunch or dinner every single day. But I told her, I'm like, we almost need to do two batches so we have four wraps because a half of a wrap, you need a side salad or a stew or something to go along yeah. with it because it's, yeah. it's not enough to really like get you you know, I mean, you're, you're, you feel good, you feel full, but in a couple hours later, you're like, oh, I could use the other half, right? Yeah. So, yeah. but man, oh. I know it's just so fun to be able to have different, like, well, we were taking the wrap, like taking your, like I had some of the Irish uh, stew, you know, uh, sauce Stuff. stuff and, like putting it on, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so good, man. And then of course- <laughs> That's exactly I, what I was just thinking, man. I was just thinking like, like, a, yeah, with the stew or with the soup and just like dunking it yeah. and like, I, I'm definitely gonna eat one wrap to myself. There's no way I can't. 100%. I mean, if, if my friend gets busy, I'll, I'll probably eat two to myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. And you know what's so amazing is <clears throat> as we've been creating these recipes, you know, over the years, but even just this last set doing the hand salad book, making all these recipes for the book, it's just so beautiful looking at the counter and like we're creating these amazing flavor profiles and textures with just unadulterated real food everywhere. Like the, the sauce is real food. The, the wrap is just loaded with all this a beautiful, delicious raw like a salad food. And the, in the wrap itself. And it's exactly. Amazing. Yeah. And it's just so incredible when you look at, you know, what you're making raw food is just so fun because you're all, there's no powders like baking mm -hmm. powder and, you know, what a baking soda and flour and oil and all the other stuff that are traditionally put into gravies and sauces. It's just amazing. Like, and then it, you just feel good looking at it. You're like, I'm going to be eating. This is real food. I'm blending it this way and drying it that way. And, you know, using this tool to process it this way. And it's just going to taste amazing, you know, it's, because it's, it's, it's just not, real. It's, yeah, it's not just like uh, all opaque and brown, you know, like, yeah. I mean, some brown food's good, but it's not yeah. all just like that Beige. dull, it's, it's not, yeah. yeah, grays and dull colors, right? Yeah. I know, Lisa, I love the term, you know, she calls like 50 shades of beige, right? Like, she's like, yeah, back in the day, people will be like, hey, aren't you bored? And she's like, no, because I used to just eat like 50 shades of beige. But now look <laughs> at all the colorful food that I have in my life. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It is like a, a 50 shades of beige, or, you know, like what most people are eating. <laughs>
<laughs> it, it is so ridiculous, right? When you actually unpack some of the complaints or questions and yeah, I mean, of course, they're, they're innocent questions a lot of the time, but, uh, sure. you know, but it is just amazing because it couldn't be further from the truth, yeah. like the variety and the colors and the juiciness and the freshness and just yeah. not to mention how incredible you feel after instead of feeling like you need to lay down on the couch after eating. Yeah, you know? 100%. And of course, that's what's so like fascinating about the new studies coming out about the microbiome. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, before that, you just think, oh, you got to develop the palate. But then it makes yeah. sense. Like when you start feeding the microbiome, your gut flora, certain kinds of foods, they start to crave those foods because they're pl proliferating down there. They're partying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm wiped out. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. Hey, man, man I, I only survive a couple days or a day here. Come on. <laughs> yep. And see, so when individuals don't eat a lot of raw high fiber foods, sometimes it can be a little uncomfortable because you know like I, I remember I worked with somebody and she's like if I have one slice of cucumber she's like I will have gas that will drive everybody out of this room every single day and I'm like well wow. you know well really just one slice of cucumber or one slice of apple but all she ate was like stale popcorn and like string cheese and crackers I mean she was she was morbidly obese you know a poor thing she's a beautiful amazing individual but it's just sad like she couldn't, she just, you know, and I mean, she tried one day and she was not wrong, bro. Like her, her yeah. gas was horrible. And so it's interesting, like developing that microbiome over time, feeding yourself more of these real foods, you do start to crave, you start to see those colors yeah. and you start to thirst. And it's probably the little dudes down there that are like, you're saying, they're like, yo, give us me some more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's amazing. It's the, it's the, the gut mind connection. Right. And like, yeah. They, they right. say it's a, even more so than the, this mind, right? And it's like, yeah. yeah, affects our mood and affects like everything, affects the foods we're, de we're des uh, not designed, the foods we're desiring. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah can't, can't be understated in, in such an emerging and growing science, right? It's just, uh, it's just amazing. It's amazing. Makes us think like, who's really running the show? Is yeah. it our consciousness or is it the microbiome that we're basically made, made up mostly of that's running the show? Because that's what's so cool about eating predominantly raw foods. Like you're saying, you're changing your structure. You know, everything's getting fed like vital nutrients. You feel better because the mind but gut connection and you that is going to transpire to anything in your life. You're more vibrant. You're a little smilier. You have the energy. And then the world's going to reflect that back on you as opposed to you being like, oh, I hate my life. I hate today, you know, or whatever. Because there's a lot of people that live in that state. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you, did you say why, mind butt? You, did you say mind you, butt you connection? You caught that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I, did. I did. It did. It slipped out. The mind butt connection, bro. You know where, I'll, you know where my mind's at. <laughs> that's a new that. one. That's, that's a new one. That's for a totally different talk. I'm going to quickly look back here because the, the, uh, Chad is going a little bit crazy here with a couple little things. And okay. I just want to see sure. really quickly here. Oh, please give me links to freeze dried natto. So, oh, Ooh. what's up Twin Flame, Divine Union? Been a little while. Um, wow, lots of awesome peeps here in the chat. Way, hey, what's up everyone? You know Chris Kettle from my hometown. Wow, that's cool. Well, nice. that's, that's where I'm from too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that's, uh, yeah. Yes. All right. All right, I'm get uh, naughty natto. Yeah, if you discover that, if you talk to John and he knows yeah. another place to get freeze dried natto, um, let's make that something to share. Someone's yeah. asking, is, is it coconut in the wraps? Oh, um, I don't believe that there is any wrap with coconut. No, I could be wrong. Don't quote me. There might be one, but I don't believe that there's any wrap itself with coconut. I know that one of the uh, the breakfast uh, the breakfast wrap. Mm -hmm. is is got some coconut in it for making the quiche yeah. some some young coconut meat but i i don't think that there's any coconut in any of the wraps but like i said don't quote me on that maybe there is one i don't know what no nope. none of the wraps have coconut nope. she said yeah there we go hey Lisa. I, you know i wanted to i wanted to say when when lissa first told me that she was doing a rap book I literally thought it was literally going to be a like a book with like 30 just the wrap like just just the wrap. And then all of a sudden she's like, 
oh, I did, you know, like 30 wraps with 30 fill in, or like probably 35 or so. I can't remember. 33. 33. 33. 33. Yeah. 33 wraps. Each wrap is different, you yeah. know, with 33 fillings. Each filling is different with 33 sauces <laughs> and bonus sauces. And it's like, right. Oh. <laughs> it's so incredible. Dude, she's unstoppable, yeah. man. Like, and I mean, if I was just tapping into this diet, like say, you know, coming across some of these lives or hearing about this, I mean, digging into some of the information and seeing, you know, who's making what, it'd be hard to, to pick one yeah. book, like, oh, I'm buying this for that particular book. Cause yeah. you know, me personally, I'm like, oh, there's like at least a half a dozen or more books that I, that would be worth the bundle alone. You know, and of course, there's been a lot of people that have said like, oh, the rap book alone is worth, and I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm partially biased, right? She's my wife, but like, it is an amazing book, man. Yeah. And she's got a 27 minute video in there, like explaining yeah. our rap story, all the woes and worries and trials and tribulations we've been through through the years. We gave up, we're like, oh, well, I guess we're not eating wraps anymore. Yeah. And I mean, I really, I loved burritos. Yeah. And this is oh, yeah. so the nice best. to have that feeling of like holding yeah. like a burrito, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm really dang excited because I've I've experienced those woes too, and like I've made yeah. some pretty good reps that I feel good about, but I can yeah. tell these are next level for sure. And yeah, the pain of a wrap that cracks or curls, or right. when you try and wrap it, it just falls apart, it was and you know doesn't cool feel we, well. We sent you that video that morning. You're like, what is this sorcery? <laughs> you yeah, know, wizardry, and yeah. it was you know the story for the for those of you who are listening in, grab the bundle. Yeah. Get, you know, tap in, download all the books and put them in a safe file so you have them forever. But tap into Lissa's hand salad books. Watch yeah. that, that video because she's so transparent with every single step to make sure that everybody has the same exact experience. And then you get to understand the story of how she stumbled across cracking the code. And like a lot of good things in life, it's by accident. Yeah. There was, yeah. And totally I'm just really happy that I, um, I bought those exact trays uh, sure. and, and I played like once I just did something and then I, I forgot about them. I haven't used them since really. You're you know? stoked. So, so do, you have one of those, do you have one of those offset spatulas? I don't, but I'm really handy with a knife. So I, I actually, except at the farm, they have one of those, but I, I just prefer a knife. Nice. I've always gotten used to it. There but, you go. Um, that, that works great. Someone's asking, uh, Watermelon Lime is asking, do you think I can make the wraps in a smaller dehydrator? Oh. Uh oh. Ooh. You know, I would say absolutely. There's, there's definitely when there's a will, there's a way. If you that, that's all you have is a smaller dehydrator. I would imagine that they would work in there. Um, what really helps is those silicone trays, and yeah. there might. I know there's a couple other sizes. I haven't really geeked out, and I don't know the sizes off the you know, top of my head. But I have seen some different sizes of those silicone trays. That just really makes it handy because you have that lip, so yeah. you can fill it up perfectly. But if it is a smaller dehydrator, then it might split up into a, a couple more wraps than just two because it is kind of designed in a way for those particular 14 by 14 Excalibur size trays. But absolutely, I mean, a dehydrator is a dehydrator, you know, yep. and you don't need the silicone wrap, but it does make it a lot easier. We actually haven't made them on just regular Teflex or silicone flat mats. Yeah. Um, so, but I would imagine that it would work the same. It's all about just not, not messing with it. Don't flip it. Don't flip it over. <laughs> That's yeah. where we messed yeah. up forever. It was just like we'd, yeah. we'd flip. Yeah. Um, it makes me wonder because when, when you make those or when she makes those, you pretty much make it level with the, uh, yes. with the edges, right? Yes. Right. And so the edges of the wrap itself are touching silicone. Yeah. Whereas if it's just in the middle of a mat, the edges aren't touching a side. So it, it might start to really try and creep up and yeah. curl those sides if you don't. That's right? what I'm thinking too. Yeah. So I know in a way, um, and I just feel like it's just important for us to, if we want to be able to make these sorts of foods, and this is something that we're into and we, we do want to nourish ourselves. We love ourselves where we know we're worth it. Why not just invest in something quality that's something that's too, I mean, I would be really bummed, honestly, in a way, if I only had the five tray, even just as a, as a single person, I, I think a five tray, you know, can work, but a nine tray, because you could do some, oh, you only have the five tray? Huh? Is that what?
Do you only have five trays? No way, Chris. You don't no, have no, nine I, trays? Back, back home in Canada, I have the nine tray, and my sister uses it right now. Gotcha. I didn't bring it here. I see. And Camilla has a five tray, and I didn't want to look down on her, so I didn't say anything, you know. And I, yeah. I, I make I make do. I mean, yeah. I think a little less of her, but um, <laughs> but I, I mean, no, I'm totally joking. But she's she's actually let, like I have. Uh, that's what I'm using right now. That's awesome. Yeah, because it's nice if you want to condense a sauce or mm. say throw your what we did with one of your stews. It was like this is so good, but we had to run. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, let's just put it in the dehydrator pull out a couple shelves, put in the dehydrator, but we had, that, we had other stuff in there too. Mm. I just feel like in so many ways, having a, a, a bigger size, if you have the space, man, you're, you won't regret it. Don't you, you know, I feel like, don't you guys have like the 12, like, don't you have like the full, like double door opening, like dehydrator room, basically? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> the I empire like, is growing and it will happen. One I, day I, you'll just walk the into the dehydrator. I've totally. been in, I've been in those like full room dehydrators. Whoa, yeah. dang. Yeah, yeah, see that's how it would have to be if we were doing mass scale and packaging stuff up and you know, have like a brand. I mean, we're picturing like we've got stuff mapped out. Maybe when we're in our fifties or something, we can start, you know, making some of those kinds of foods and getting them packaged and ship them all over the world. Who knows? Like that's we've got all true. kinds of different ideas, you know, it'd be really awesome. Yes. I know personally, like I would, I would purchase certain oh. products from people if they were going to ship it to me 100% like like we do we do absolutely all right you know I um if, yeah the person to connect with is Curtis Griffin of Raw Food Central because oh. he, he was a part of the bundle in the past he'll be a part in the future for sure Cur um awesome awesome dude the the raw father you know like I think yeah. 45 years raw or something and you know really really big into it and you know Raw Food Central was making uh kale chips and um uh they did like mixes with like freeze-dried peas and a whole bunch of cool stuff and yeah. they had them in a few whole foods uh out in connecticut i believe um okay. and i think they're still doing it. that's one of the places that i went to and they just had like yeah they had like dehydration room and like it was, oh man it was amazing but uh at one cool. point i was talking to him trying to get my pizza crusts with Ooh. them like make pizza crusts and get them into like whole foods never yeah. panned through but that's a dream as well oh my gosh that would be game changer yeah. Game changer. Cause yeah, that's, that's what a lot of people like to do. They like to get the baboli or whatever it is, just a quick pizza crust, go home, make your pizza. Mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah. And like, man, if you had the, your pizza crust, I know we we're actually, we're kind of bummed in a way. To, well, we have a, a, a chest freezer, so we could freeze the big crusts, yeah. but our freezer, it's one of those side by side fridge freezer. So the freezer's only like this wide. Yeah. So we can't yeah. fit like a full crust in there, but it was nice having like three, four crusts in the freezer, you know, yeah. keeping those on rotation because having pizza, it's just yeah. another one of the, it's just fun, you know, like a different texture. It's a different thing that we, we love our salads and our smoothies and our yeah. fruit and stuff, but it is so fun to have these different textures and just, I feel like eating with our hands, there's something about that that's fun, right? That's what they're designed for, right? There's like yeah. perfectness, like whether yeah. we're grabbing a fruit or whether we're picking up a pizza or wrap, grabbing a wrap. It's like, Arr! it's like, yeah, yeah I, I 100%. Don't have to so good, man. Pizza. Right. Yeah. The, I know it's interesting how it is in the UK. I, I feel like we were watching this show called Super Size versus Super Skinny, which was a very fascinating show. We were kind of like just t dipping into the psychology aspects of the similarities between the two, but it was really interesting to watch them use their knife and fork and how they were so proper, right? Because it's a, it was yes. filmed over there in the UK. Yeah. I'm like, wow, look at them with their knife and fork. Like here we are in America. It's like pretty, you know, just slopping it down. But they're very <laughs> they're dainty, like, little bites. Totally like that. Yep. And they're like, you're using the salad fork. And right. This yeah. is the entree. <laughs> yeah. And I here we it. are. We're like feral, you know, yeah. like picking this stuff up, eating with <laughs> our hands. And, yeah. But there is something to be said about that. I feel like there's, yeah, there's, you know, it's fun in a lot of ways. That's where it's nice to have some of these different recipes. Like Enzyme, he has his corn dog recipe we made. Yeah. And <clears throat> I want to make that again. It turned out so so amazing just like the perfect kind of crunch on that outer shell and he's also another contributor to the bundle and yep. some of his recipes i'm like man he has got to be one of the most creative recipe creators yep. that i've i've ever come across like yep. some of his stuff is just so amazing you wouldn't even think of 
putting certain combo. That's what's so cool with the bundles. Everybody's got their flair. You're like, oh my yeah. gosh, like, you know, this and that, that makes that, how, how amazing, you know? Yeah. So it's, I feel like I was saying, I don't know if I was saying in one of my lives or, or something rather, like there's gotta be over a hundred years worth of knowledge in this book combined. There's probably over 150 years if you were to combine everybody and how long they've been on their trail and what they've contributed. So for those who are getting the bundle, mm -hmm. they're tapping into the minds mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, and compiling, you know, compiled information of over 100, 150 years worth of, of wisdom, which is yeah. not only the knowledge of the certain recipe, but the wisdom because they've actually created it and put it into practice and created recipes for all of us to use. It's a screaming deal, 100%. It's nuts, man. It's nuts. And, if, and then if you consider the, uh, just the informational books, because you're probably right, somewhere around the like 100 and some years of, yeah. of recipes, and then just yeah, like, the informational, we're, we're like a couple hundred years, right? Because we've got right. some people that are like 40 plus years raw right. in the bundle. And, you know, yeah, so, if you so. were to add Rick and Karen together, there's got to be like probably close to 70 years between the two of them right there. And their yeah. dressing difference book is so awesome mm -hmm. to really just make sense of how, uh, how, how a simple dressing can change the nutrient profile of mm -hmm. your salad and how yeah. the dressing does make the difference. And of course, before I was even raw or vegan, I, I knew throwing ham and turkey and cheese and eggs and Thousand Island dressing, it was like, why am I even eating a salad? It's just, but of course, you know, I liked the crisp and the crunch of the lettuce compiled yeah. with all those other things. And I mean, I destroyed the salad. <laughs> it was not a healthy, it was not a healthy option. It was probably worse than certain, you know, like options I could have choose like a burrito or something rather, right? But you still yeah, thought you're healthy. Didn't? You thought you were healthy. I did. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I, I'm I, having a salad. You know, I'm putting some eggs on there, some cold cuts. I got two different kinds of lean cold cuts on this. Oh man, horrible. I, but dude, I did it's the, the programming. Same. Sorry. It's the programming. Yeah. You know, like we're, you know, it's 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 not. I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily our fault because of how inundated we are through society's programming and just how marketing and stuff is. Mm. And, you know, the way that the saying goes, seek and these shall find, like, you know, yeah. you know, if you're searching for the truth, you know, the truth, you'll find the truth if you go searching for it. And that's the thing that, you know, people have to do is they got to go digging, but it can be confusing too, yeah. because there's so many people that are so confident and so convincing. You're like, Oh my gosh, this makes sense. I just need to eat nothing but animal flesh. That's how I'm going to do That's perfect. You know, yeah. it makes sense the way that they're talking about it. So it's, they got a lot of conviction how they're speaking. So it can be hard to discern what is the truth. But yeah. I know when you do, I feel like when you do uh, open your heart, really, yeah. it just makes yeah. perfect sense that Mother Nature wants the best for her children, you know, yeah. or all her children, and, you know, and yeah. plants. Like when we look at the studies, Plants are shown time and time again to be such an integral and beneficial part. And if the microbiome is kind of like going extinct because we're not feeding it what yeah. it wants and what it's been developed on over 10,000 years or whatever, it's, uh, I know that's, that's where I feel like the trail that we're on and other people are coming into to promote the beauty and the fun and the tastefulness of real raw food is so important man Absolutely. so important even yeah, if you're so not a raw back. vegan even if you're not a vegan or a raw vegan like why not incorporate more raw foods into yep. your day-to-day -day life right absolutely man yeah no it's uh nature's bounty is just is so plentiful and it's just so abundant and yeah. it makes so much sense you know some, something i like to do and for me this simplifies things is to look at any kind of um you know, idea around whatever nutrition or whatever, when people have an idea, yeah. I like to kind of back up and go, okay, well, how does this match up against the largest body of science, like the largest body of evidence? And then I like to look, okay, well, how does this match up to our closest living relatives, you know, the bonobos and what they eat in their natural habitat? And then I like to think, okay, well, how does this really connect with my intuition and my heart? And then I like to think, how does this connect with, you know, the people I know and look up to who have been doing this for a long time, as well as my own experience, you know, and if 
if all three, at least three or four of those aren't like ringing, you know, yeah. all four of them, if they aren't ringing, like they're, to me, those are the cornerstones, right? And it's like, yeah. someone can say something if it's like, well, it's, it, it totally doesn't ring true at all with Mother Nature's design or doesn't ring true yeah. with the largest body of evidence. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not going to put much weight on yeah. that. Uh, that's such a great uh, idea for a playlist series, man. That's a, that's something that should be, we should be in a way like, inundating people with that kind of information because the way that you laid that out that's a, that's great and i feel like naturally a lot of people when they are on the search they are going to be tapping into one of those core four right like okay how does this make sense what is the largest body of evidence that we've seen and when we actually start to dig in it it it, it, it just rings true and it just yeah uh, when you think about it you eat a melon maybe you eat mm -hmm. the seeds you poo the seeds yep. It grows yeah. more melons. Like, yeah. how can it be? It's just so Perfect. the symbiosis of it. It's not like, yeah, like if you cut off a, you know, pig's leg, it's going to grow back or anything. But if you, you know, no. cut a branch off a tree, it's going to keep growing. You know, it's just so amazing. Yeah. Like, or you could replant it. And I, right. I, one day I envision having uh, some land mm. and having a bunch of, uh, you know, fruity friends who for a few days before they just gorge on their personal favorites and then they come on my land and we go around and have a pooing party. I just, love it. You know, everyone plants their own trees. And uh, yep. as I can imagine it being so much fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, bro. That's, that's got to be a documentary. And especially if it's like uh, taken over the duration of like five or 10 years to see the trees grow, you know, like, <laughs> I know it's, it might grow some people out, but I mean, that's how it would be in nature. Yeah. That's, that's how it works. So that's where, you know, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting how it makes sense as someone who eats predominantly like a fruit based diet that you're causing the least amount of harm. Like, you know, say for those who don't eat onions or garlic, right, because you're not uprooting the, the garlic. But I know, of course, there's benefits, you know, to these other foods as well. But I know that the, that's where I feel like the fruit based diet is so appealing is because you're like doing the least amount of Farm. You're taking the fruiting flower, you know, yeah. from the plant, whatever it may be. Of course, you know, like say with vegetables, you can pick off leaves and it'll keep growing. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I know. I, I always like to put that forth because a lot of times people do say that like fruit is the only freely given. And, you know, like I, I feel like I have a really good connection with plants in the way that, like, especially when I'm in a greenhouse or something like, you know, when I'm at the farm of life in Costa Rica, I, I go in the greenhouse and I, I help and do little weeding and stuff like that. And, but I, I like to take the leaves that are just past, you, like not the young ones. I like the ones that are yeah. just past and maybe have just the slightest wrinkle. And I'm like, hey, I'll help you. You know, but like yeah. I, I grab it so that the other ones grow and it flourishes yeah. and it helps the plant, you know? And it's like, yeah, I think we can become, uh, you know, in symbiosis with the, with the greens and stuff yeah. like that very much as well. Right. And what's cool is most greens, they'll go to bolt and, you know, produce their own seed to yeah. reproduce themselves again. And, yeah. It's just beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, shoot, we, you know, we, we love our vegetables, man. Vegetables <laughs> are so amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And something I just wanted to mention too, that is so beautiful about this bundle is, you know, you were mentioning how like it can be confusing out there. Um, well, everyone in the bundle, whether or not, you know, like uh, we're not going to say that everyone eats exactly the same, but we have really the same kind of platform, the really the same base that really matches those four things that we just talked yeah. about. Yeah, the same and foundation. So, yeah. Same foundation. And, you know, people who have been thriving on this anywhere from a few years up to like 40 years and, you know, coached yeah. thousands of people. You know, we got Doug Graham in here too. He's right. sharing his 26, uh, 26, um, 26 misconceptions, misconceptions about the raw, yeah, with the raw food diet. Yeah. You know, he's another guy like, I think he's nearing 50 years raw food and it's like, it's just amazing the yeah. knowledge and the common sense and the yeah. nature driven kind of information and recipes in this bundle. Right. It's amazing. Yeah. And um, yeah, there's something for everybody. And I know that like there's other new people coming in who have been saying to raw foods for a very long time, like Chef Yin. Yeah. She's like, I learned from, I can't remember the three chefs, off the top of my head of who she learned from, but it was high amounts of coconut oils and different oils in the recipes. And a lot of times raw, a lot of raw food has a lot of oil, a lot of cashews, a lot of coconut butters and these sorts of things. And 
it's interesting because when you look at those, those foods, when they've sat on the counter for a while and they solidify into, you know, say, not necessarily olive oil, but like, say, coconut oil, it, you know, solidifies. And you think, man, if that's inside me, and then, you know, we start to research like, oh, like coconut has such a high amount of saturated fat. And so that's what I really appreciate. And I hope that other people can grow to understand as well, which I know a lot of people do, is that because everybody has the same foundation that they're standing upon, there's no oil yeah. in any of these recipes. There's no added yeah. oils. If anything, yeah. if there's any oils, it's a natural oil from like adding, you know, flax seeds or something, you know, naturally, or maybe some shredded coconut or something. But... Mm man, that's another really cool thing. And I was really surprised when Chef Yeti was like, yeah, she's like, I, you know, I got the bundle, uh, you know, the first bundle. And she's like, it, that, like, what, that changed her whole perception. Yeah. And she'd yeah. been a raw foodie for like eight years, nine years or something. So that was yeah. really cool to hear. Absolutely. It's, it's amazing the transformations I've heard and seen. And, you know, I recently yeah. interviewed just the other day, Happy Raw Rennie. Okay. And, you know, this is going really live with her in two, in two minutes, I think. Oh, no way. Okay, we got to be quick. I, I yeah, interviewed her and she, she shared that the first bundle actually really shifted her raw journey as well. And she'd already been raw food for 15 years and just helped her even more fully understand how to yeah. stay at a really lean, healthful body weight without any effort, you know, and yeah. before that, she'd had a little bit of ups and downs. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it's amazing how much this helps. And it's just so awesome. We're all coming together as a raw food yeah. community to raise this message up and just help more people. And Exactly. Yeah, we, we, we didn't get a, so awesome. a ton into the raw kitchen stuff, but we did a yeah. little bit. But this yeah, was even more important. Yeah, we, we talked, we, 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 peppered, we peppered it with all kinds of delicious, you know, tidbits. So, yeah, we're, we're good there. But, yeah, I know exactly. Like you're saying, you know, for anybody who is getting the bundle, whether they're a seasoned raw foodie or not, just yeah. tapping in, this is, there's something for everybody. Like, that's what I love about being a contributor to this is because I get – to get everybody's stuff as well. It's such a great thing. And hopefully there's other people listening. Maybe they're inspired and they want to start creating some something to offer. Like hit Chris up, become yeah. a part of the bundle. We want more people in. So that way more people deliver the message, especially when we're all on the same kind of wavelength, the foundation of no oil. Yeah. And, you know, of course being vegan, but it's amazing, man, because we're all able to pick up something from this. We're learning new stuff too. Like we've made, probably over 50 recipes from the wow. bundle so far of other people's yeah. stuff. And we're like, sometimes we're just completely blown away. Like, how did we not ever do this? This is amazing, right? Yeah. So did it's you, really did cool. Did you see the manicotti I made yesterday? Bro, it looked incredible. Very, very nicely done. Yeah, it's how crazy. Was it? It, was, so it was really good. I'll, I'll be making yeah. it again. And uh, yeah. as you said, yeah, just like like so inspired and and yeah yeah and Enz enzymes man his stuff his he's got that noodle that alfredo noodle a couple yeah. of his recipes actually happened by accident that turned out amazing we made that uh crispy chicken sandwich of his i don't know if you saw that yeah yeah Dude. ridiculous yeah ridiculous now of course nothing is going to replace bread like for yeah. it to taste and feel and like like a legit original oven risen bread yeah but this was so close mm -hmm. and it was just so nice to hold a triangulated cut sandwich i'm like this is amazing <laughs> it's a raw food sandwich oh, and it's man. all you know relatively low fat too that's yeah. another thing that i really like it's not like you know it's it's made with all kinds of you know fatty ingredients so you don't feel super uh weighed down his his alfredo noodle recipe we did make that and that was fun that's something i could picture making you know periodically for other people the flavors were amazing and it's just like so creative and like we've just barely scratched the surface of what's in the bundle yeah there's so much it's i mean if if someone were to take and make a fresh brand new recipe for every day they would have over a year's worth of recipes like there's got to be over 400 recipes in this bundle, which yeah. can be kind of overwhelming. And we've said to people like, just take one book and just yeah. focus on that one book for that week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because there's 40, there's 40 books. So you'd have nearly a year's worth of books. You're like, I'm going to just study Chris's book this week. And I'm going to mm -hmm. make recipes out of Chris's book this week. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, 
What tools do I need? I'm going to tap into Nate's course and figure out what tools I'm going to need to make these recipes. Because there are certain tools that do make the job so much easier, Absolutely. so much more efficient. Quick, and that's that's what your, your, your course kind of goes into as well a lot, eh? Yeah, because yeah, really, like, in the beginning, I was like, what do I need? I know I need something. What is this high-speed blender? I keep hearing this hum about everybody talking. Make sure you use a high-speed blender. Yeah. And I'm like, I've got a ninja. Like, is that not a high-speed blender? And then you start to realize. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just <laughs> totally. I'm just joking. That's what, it, that's what it feels. I mean, a ninja will get the job done. Absolutely. But it's a completely different ball game when you're yeah. using something like a Vitamix or even like a blend tech. I know blend tech uses really good equipment as well. But yeah, I just... I was looking like, where do I go? What do I need? I want to know every tool. I kind of geek out like that. Like, I want all the tools that I need so I can just really geek out and do this the proper way. And there's yeah. certain tools that really make the job handy. So that's why I created the Kitchen Essentials course. Is like, yeah. all right, maybe maybe there's some people tapping in and they they don't have the Vitamix or say like the Bio Chef. Yeah, dude. Right, that's I mean, it took us two, it took us over two years to finally like make the connection. And just pull the plug and buy that thing. Yeah. And we're like, why did we wait so long? So now in my course, I'm like, hey, you know, aside from the essentials, a knife and a cutting board, <laughs> you know, like get the Vitamix or the Dynapro or some sort of vacuum blender. And then, of course, these being yeah. able to vacuum seal your jars to keep your stews like we have your stew, one of your stews in the fridge under vacuum. And it's cool if it slightly ferments. Mm -hmm. It still tastes amazing. And you know, it's like, if you haven't got to it, dehydrate it for a moment just to warm it up. Mm. All these tools just make this, this diet become a lifestyle and it just becomes so much more fun in a yeah. lot of ways. Like they say like a person's only as good as their tools, really. Yeah. You know, so when you have the right tools, the job just is so much easier and you're going to have the same outcome without the dehydrator with those silicone sheets. It's really tricky to get that particular end product of those wraps. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you'd, yeah. Have, you'd have a tough time. You, you use, then you're just using lettuce, which is fine. You know, you can use right. lettuce or collard leaves and, and that totally. can be amazing. And still, you That's can probably amazing. still make all the fillings and sauces from the wrap book without a dehydrator and just yeah. use a collard leaf. But but those oh, wraps great. are freaking next next level. You know, it's- uh, next, yeah. it's I was like, Lissa, you're, you've changed the world. I honestly yeah. feel like this <laughs> book alone is going to springboard it's it's a it's a whole nother series of raw foodies because of this book is going to change man it's going to change yeah. the game for so many people i mean because it's a fail proof delicious wrap that you're going to get and we've scoured we spent like two months bro like you know not every single day but scouring the world of the internet trying to find good wrap the, the good wrap recipes that we could kind of pull from and you know alter and and it's so cool that she was able to figure this totally by accident. I'm like, hey, the universe, man, like God's behind your back because yeah. you're not taking from anybody's rest. This is completely your own thing. Like it's, but of course, I actually have heard from a couple people that they do teach it in culinary school. Mm -hmm. So if you do pay to go into culinary school, they give the same kind of tip, which is don't flip it. Oh, wow. Don't flip. Yeah. Wow. So, and of course, you take the same kind of uh, tray and. I mean, I haven't made a, a I haven't made the fruit leathers in it, but I love making fruit fruit roll up style yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, because you're like putting like strawberries and lemon. Oh, so good, right? Yeah. Apples and you know some allspice, delicious for the tra trail or you know you're out camping or something. So yeah, and then they hold really well. Good way to preserve food. Mm. Yeah, love you it. You have the freeze dryer too, hey? And is that in the book? Is that in the course a little bit? Yeah. So I did. Yeah. We got the freeze dryer. We saved up for like over three years for this machine wow. man like, yeah it's pretty intense it was it was kind of like a dream of ours like oh it'd be so fun to like freeze dry like our dressings and bring them on the trail mm -hmm. so yeah we did tap in got the freeze dryer got the large model and i have a module in my kitchen course dedicated completely to the freeze wow. dryer and kind of leading you through all the tidbits and and stuff and as well as i put in there the history down below the history of freeze drying like where does it come from how did it begin and, like and originate? NASA? Who was the first? Well, actually, NASA was in the 60s. They were the first to bring, um, like, the ice cream and stuff. You know, that was, like, that was when it became, like, mainstream. Okay. But it was actually, um, gosh, you know, I, I don't know the exact date off the top of my head. It's, it's skipping me. But um, it was, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s 
when it was starting to become more mainstream for doing like, uh, they were doing it for preserving antibiotics and, oh, wow. and different, and yeah, for, for, you know, like the war, you know, a good way to preserve, but it because it's before that, I don't know if it's like 13, 1400, 1500, something rather in there is when it first originated wow. in like in Peru, like in the mountains in the Andes or something, but they didn't actually start building the machines until the early 1900s. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the NASA came out and they started to do it to where, yeah, they started to actually sell to the public, the, like the freeze dried ice cream and, and different, you know, different things. So yeah, amazing that, that, though. Like, yeah. you know, if you got a bunch of tomatoes and you can't eat all your tomatoes, you could puree the tomatoes, freeze dry the puree or the mm-hmm. slices. The slices would probably be better than the puree. And then, powder them up and you've got delicious tomato powder that'll if it's packaged right it'll last on the shelf they say i mean i haven't tested this myself but they say 20 to 25 years so you could if i love the name of the company here in the states it's the only free shire you can actually get you know it's that's available to the public it's called harvest right and it's such a great name because you know you're like how can we harvest right you know what's the best way to harvest because if you the way that trees and, and plants produce sometimes there's so much like what do you do with it all like if you have yeah. so several zucchini plants mm-hmm. you're giving zucchini away to everybody but yeah. now with the freeze dryer like what we do we're actually buying cases of zucchini because they're oh, super God. cheap coin them up make a sweet delicious no fat marinade freeze dry it and you have like these chips these freaking zucchini Legit chips. chips man that just like explode with flavor in your mouth but of course you got to drink more water with freeze dried food. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, I definitely share all the, the fun stuff that we've been doing with the freeze dryer in the module in the, uh, in the course as well. And that's, that's the highest, uh, in, you know, the most cost costly investment that we've made as far as any kind of like a kitchen or preserving tool, but it's highly worth it. I believe oh. and it's going to pay for itself mm-hmm. like within a year's time, depending on what you actually do. Like we're not, you know, we're like, oh, jackfruit's six cents a pound, you know, at the market down in LA. Yeah. We're like, cool, let's yeah. take four of them. We'll just freeze dry a bunch. We'll freeze a bunch. We'll eat jackfruit until we're sick in the stomach, you know, from jackfruit. So now we have like, we probably have two gallons worth of freeze dried jackfruit. And that's such a great snack. Like it doesn't oh, weigh yeah. hardly anything. And do you, do you know, you of make, course it's, what's that? Sorry, I, I was going to ask, do you, do you make um, raw vegan fruit loops? Like just like, a whole bunch of freeze dried fruits and then you just put it in a bowl and pour banana milk oh, on top as a, as a cereal. Oh my God, dude. No. You've bro, never had it? You're blowing me up. You're blowing my, that's a great idea. It's we haven't best. done that. Yeah. I've done best. it I've bought freeze dried fruit and just made like fruit yeah. cereal, like fruit, freeze dried fruit cereal. And it's oh, amazing. Just, yeah. Because when it's reconstituted, it's got a little bit different of a texture than it does when it's yeah. natural. It's a little softer. Yeah. Right, so I could imagine that would just be absolutely delicious. But what's cool is I we didn't have any jackfruit. Do that? it quick while it's still crunchy. Like I, like I have the bowl. I, gotcha. I do it so it's still crunchy, like yeah. cereal. I you love know, it. But it, it. I love that. Let me know when you try. That's it. way better. That's way better. Well, the other day we didn't have any jackfruit for one of uh, for a couple of the recipes that called for jackfruit. So we just took the freeze dried jackfruit, reconstituted it in water, and we're like, sweet. Now we got basically like fresh jackfruit. You know, because yeah. when you dehydrate it. It changes the structure, like it shrivels up, it changes the size, but when you freeze dry it, it pretty much keeps its original shape and state. Yeah. It's so amazing, it's magical. So and it's under yes. vacuum, so there's no oxygen. That's why it's retaining you know, 90 to 97% of the nutrients is still yeah. intact. That's another amazing aspect, yeah. I gotta so say, cool. I'm almost afraid to watch that section of your course just because then I'm gonna have to save up for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So there's a company over in the UK area that I don't know the name of the company. I should know the name. And I think I may have put it in the PDF in the course, but um, that's, that's the only other company over there. This, I think there's only really two companies that are making them, you know, uh, to where the public can actually buy. They used to be like 20 or $30,000 for one of these wow. machines. And there's really like when I'm looking at it, cause I, I had to do some troubleshooting. We had a couple little issues which I kind of go over in the course, um, but there's not many components to it, like a dehydrator. There's like really, not, there's like a timer, you know what I mean? Like there's not yeah. much to it. So yeah. hopefully 
they can kind of come down in size. I mean, they've got the market cornered and people yeah. are like, you know, you either, you either want it or you don't. And then of course, like the prepper and off grid community. Oh yeah. You That's know, they're the biggest they're big, for it. They're biggest, they're big spenders too. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's definitely like a couple thousand dollars. You know, I think the small is like 22 or $2,400. Yeah. And, you know, our large one was $3,800 U.S. But like I said, we just saved up. It was just kind of a dream we never let die, <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. I'll, so I'll, not I'll everything... join you there sometime. I'll join you yeah. there sometime. And hopefully you'll join me there sometime to, uh, you yeah. know, do the pooping planting party. Absolutely, bro. I'll be definitely down to come poop on your property. <laughs> Question. Are you 13 minutes late for Chef Yin? Oh, oh, no. No, Chef Yin is, um, am I? I'm not on with Chef Yin today. Okay, I thought you'd said you had to be on with her in a couple of minutes. Oh, no. Oh, I was saying, you were saying that you went live with Rennie, and I'm like, Liz is going live with Rennie at, at nine. Yeah. Oh, okay, so Liz is out Chef. there. She's live with Rennie right now. I'm like, wait a minute. No, I'm not supposed to be on with Chef. I was on with Chef Yin the other night. Um, in her book, Asian Sweet Treats, we've tapped in, made a couple of her recipes because we love our sweets. That's another amazing book. She's a very talented chef. Gosh, she's got so some good. very unique flavor profiles of some of her yeah. other books. That's another, you know, if, if, you know, when you tap into this bundle, there's all kinds of really amazing things. I love how Ted, I've been telling Ted, I'm like, yo, bro, you need to build a program where you're showing us the workout. You show us yes. the workout. So yeah. he's got his full workout uh, program in here where he shows you the right proper form for certain uh, lifts and, 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 you know, calisthenic moves. And of course, that's something that's really important too. Like we're, sometimes we're so focused on the internal, like we're not maybe working as much on the external as we, we probably yeah. should. So I'm excited to implement like that. Bro, I'm telling you, man, me and Lisa, that's the, like, we have so many things dialed. I feel like in our life, like our sleep's on point, we get up early, we walk, but like <laughs> our, our yoga and our exercise routine is Needs work, bro. Needs yeah. work. <laughs> I've, sl I've slipped a bit in the last two months with the bundle. And I, it's kind of funny. I was, t I was talking to Lisa about this because um, in the last two months, I've actually lost a lot of weight because I was before the before I was like really like charging full steam, like full time on the bundle. Yeah, I was going to the gym and was just consistently eating a lot and doing all my stuff and, and active and I, my, my my activity level has dropped and also I've just been so busy. I just haven't been thinking like some days I've been eating like 1200 calories and by no means am I saying that's right. good or it's just right. what's happened. And I've, it's just I've, what happened. It's just what happened. Yep. And I'm, I'm, I think I'm about like 12 or 13 pounds lighter just for the last couple Underweight. months. Yeah, gotcha. but, but, yeah. but I can get it. I can get it up really easily, pretty quick too yeah. when I want. So it's good. <laughs> I like how you said that, bro. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's something that, I mean, tap into the bundle, you know, start making some of these recipes and then you know, you'll have no problem putting on some weight if you do the proper combination of some of these recipes. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah. No problem at all. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And Lisa also has her uh, cheese, some cheese recipes, you know, for spreads in her wrap book. Yes. That's another one that can be kind of dangerous. You know, we, we try not to make cheese and keep it around too often because we just eat it. <laughs> it's easy but to it is do. So delicious. It's absolutely easy to do. Yeah. Someone's asking, how do you become a man that cares about all this? It's just me trying to help my whole family live better. Mm, that's hard. That's tricky. You know, I know what is it, do you think, Chris, that brings people over to wanting to eat fresher healthier foods like what, what do you what do you think it, it, it is that really sh would shift say like a man the male well uh, usually out? usually what i see anyway is that it's it's either for like a devastation like some kind of an illness um for like somebody who's just really like you know really often you say intelligent but someone who's just really into sciencey like nutrition like wants to learn about stuff or someone who's really athletic. Like those are typically the most common three. Um, but I think that the, the best way to try and entice somebody is to play on their, their, their uh, what's it called? Um, their pre pressure points, right? It's like, if, if, if they wanna be, you know, like really manly and stuff, well, you, you know, like Game Changers talked about that, right? Like how it yeah. really doesn't help with virility or, you know, sexual right. function. It's like, 
if you're a manly man, well, yeah, like you, you, you want to feel good. You want to be able to make others feel good. Like yeah. you're going to be able to do a heck of a lot better if you're, you're free flowing and, uh, you know, like, you know, really vibrant and light and high blood flow. And, you know, so it's meeting people where they're at. If they're athletic, it's like, well, hey, do you want to like, you want to be a better athlete? You want to recover faster? You know, like yeah. if you're an academic, do you want to think clearer, have sharper memory, sharper recall? It's just, mm. it's finding where people are at and, uh, and really playing those points with like really good information and it's out there. That's so good. And then of course, offering them delicious food to boot, be like, yeah, you know, you're asking yeah. them the proper yes. questions. I like how you're, you're hitting it from that angle because really it's interesting. We, we can't, it's not best practice to tell other people what they should do and what, how it's going to be so much more amazing. You have to hit it from that Socratic method where you're asking the proper questions yeah. to get, to hopefully get the desired answer that you're wanting them to. Uh, and then they, they hear themselves say it, right? Yeah. You know, in a way it can be a, a slightly I don't, I don't necessarily think it would be completely manipulative, but, no. you know, asking them those questions. Yeah. Like, Hey, you know, you play this sport. Yeah. Do you want to recover faster? How mm -hmm. awesome would it be if you weren't sore for three days and you're only sore for one, you know, yeah. well, how could I do that? Do I have to take some sort of pill? No, just eat this food, you know? Yeah. And like you're saying for men, I feel like a lot of it, and this is kind of what it was for me when I met, cause I watched, I watched my mom reverse her kidney cancer mm -hmm. with raw foods. And it still took me eight months to really transition and, and take it and, and really run with it. And it wasn't until I met that guy, John, on the ski lift, yeah. who was 86 years old, reversed his stage four colorectal cancer at the age of 42. And he's like, I've been a raw foodie ever since for 44 years. And I'm like, holy, like you're on the black diamond run. You know, we're skiing. He's 86 years old. And then, of course, as a dude, I'm like, how's the be flagpole? Dead. How's the flagpole, bro? And no. he's like, still full mast. And I'm like, damn, all right, well, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm going home. I'm going to figure out how to do this because I'm watching friends of mine at that time when I was, I think I was uh, 39. I think I was 39, maybe just, just turning 40. And I was watching friends of mine that I grew up with that were, you know, just a year older than me having implications down there. And I was like, I'm heading down the same road if I don't change my ways yeah. because, you know, I've got this, you know, I'm, everybody has a different body type and I have a body type that definitely puts on body fat a lot quicker, a lot easier. And I'm, I'm like watching myself. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm gaining weight and, you know, impotence is going to be a thing for me most definitely because when we think of the blood vessels, you know, the blood vessel that's going to the male and female member is like the size of a coffee stir stick straw. Mm. And the one going to our, the aorta going to our heart is like the size of like a big smoothie straw. Mm -hmm. Which one's going to clog up first? Yeah. So I was like, I got to do this. Yeah. So that's definitely a great way to angle it. You know, like, hey, do you want to be, you know, <laughs> vital <laughs> and still be functioning when you're in your older years? Still have the drive even? Yeah. I feel like the drive too is another big thing. Yeah. I mean, gosh. Yeah. So amazing yeah definitely so hopefully good luck for for you out there with your family that's that's definitely tricky it and of is. course getting getting the raw vegan bundle is a great way too because then you're, you're like hey try this delicious thing that i made it's special it's got this and this and this in it and it's good for this and this and the person you know they might be like this actually tastes pretty good don't say it's raw vegan no exactly <laughs> I, was, I was just gonna say sometimes you don't even want to mention that it's raw it's vegan and definitely don't say healthy because nothing turns right. off taste buds for a lot of people when you say it's healthy and like yeah you know it's funny like, the negative just... connotation the negative connotation that we have towards the term raw vegan in the population because somebody could be eating an apple and be like this is the best tasting apple of the season and you could be like you know that's raw vegan and then they'd be like i don't like it i thought it tastes weird yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, you gotta be careful with, with telling them that it's raw vegan. They, they, people really most of the time need to come to it to themselves. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like that inception, you know? Yeah. I, I, think, I think something that is challenging uh, on this lifestyle is just coming to a place of acceptance that everyone's on their own path and yeah. really focusing on yourself and just yeah. letting go. And mm -hmm. what I've definitely seen is, you know, when you let go, people are much more likely to actually be interested and come to you. And yeah. the energetics of like putting guilt on somebody or telling them or like, you know, most of the time people are utilizing foods as a coping mechanism right. for stress. And if you put extra yeah. stress on them, telling them that they're not doing good, they're not healthy, they're going to die. 
well, they're going to get extra stressed and double down on those other things. You know, so instead, sometimes it is just focus on yourself, make it abundant. Don't make it a big deal at all. Make it as casual and chill as possible. And for kids, just have the food available. Just have fruits around and, you know, make stuff and just put it out. Don't talk about it, you know, and just let your example be the thing that shines forth. And, you know, to me, that, that, that often really helps the most in those situations. I love that angle, man. And like with the kids, get them in the kitchen, have them cut up yes. the fruits, have them, you know, touch the strawberries and they're putting, what else do you want to put in this morning? You know, they're like, let's put in some, some of those basil leaves. And you're like, oh, okay, we're doing apple basil this morning. You know, and you never know the concoctions get, have them have, kids can have a lot of fun with it because they're already, I feel like more in tune with colors and their heart space is open. They haven't made the, you know, we haven't developed the taste buds to, you know, muttered down from all the salts and oils and it can be really fun for the kids. But yeah, like you're saying, man, I, I don't like, you know, putting any stress on anybody. And I mean, there was definitely points in times in my, my, you know, on this path where I, I would be frustrated and you want to tell people, come on, you got to do this. But yeah, like you're saying, everybody's on their own spiritual evolutionary journey of yeah. being a human. And of yeah. course, maybe people don't believe that way. They believe in a different way, but either way, yeah. I like I tell my mom because my mom would be like she'd stop somebody in the store and talk to them like in a way like not reading their body language they're kind of like trying to get out of the, but she's like overly going at it yeah. and I'm like mom some people just came here to party they don't yeah. want yeah they yeah. don't want to you know that maybe that's you know if yeah. we believe in reincarnation and making the choice of coming back which yeah. who knows I like that concept it's yeah. like maybe they made the choice to come here this particular round and and just be an alcoholic and someone who's yeah. you know addicted to nicotine or whatever like you know who knows you know no. but yeah like you said those different points sometimes people come to the realization on their own where they're like you know what i want to i want to change i want to pivot and change the way that i'm conducting myself in my life and that's where i was i was yeah. like you know what i want to be like this dude skiing at 86 what's he doing like all right i'm gonna do what you're doing living foods this makes sense i've heard about this living food thing you yeah. know yeah. Yeah, I'm the same, man. I'm the same. And it's, it's, it's sad, but true that most people need to get to a place where being where they are is harder than making the choice to change. And yeah. the crazy thing, though, is the thought of change is always like 10 times more painful than the reality of change. So it's like, oh, man. So, so it's almost like, you know, their, their situation has to get so damn bad, that they're almost ready to check out or just like they're falling a freaking part, you know, and like, right. it, it's Way, it's way harder than the change, but yeah. in their mind, the change is still really da like harder than that, you know? It's yeah. And then, of course, when you do take this diet serious and you really practice and you clear out your house and you clear out your kitchen of all the stuff that you don't need, man, it's faster to go grocery shopping and faster to prepare your meal, unless you're doing something a bit more gourmet that you need to plan, like say doing the wraps, you gotta start the day before, it's best. You know, or maybe you wanna have like a, a cheese sauce you're gonna make, that's gonna take, you know, a week to make cause you gotta soak the nuts and then, you know, blend it up and let it ferment in the fridge for a while. But most of the stuff like cut a mango, boom, put it in your thing with some celery, you know? Yeah. It's so fast, yeah. it's so clean. And once you've done it for a minute, you're like, wow. Cause when my boys were here, they were making um, some Daya mac and cheese. Mm -hmm right? And it took them longer to make their boxed macaroni and cheese than it was for me and Lisa to make two massive bowls worth of salad. We yeah. were sitting down before them yeah. and we started at the same time. We made the dressing, we cut up the stuff. And so it's like, like, it's not any, it doesn't take any longer, but of course, yeah, we have to change the way that we're planning our day or how we we have to change the way we think it all starts with the mind right we're like making the decision okay i want something different for myself i need to figure out how to what do i do yeah how do i shop what do i buy it's a learning curve but that's the, that's the beautiful thing again about this bundle is there's you know like yeah. beginner starting kits and you know, like your kitchen kits and like you know yoga courses there's there's so many courses that really deal with all the main main issues and then like i said the video series that goes into the 26 misconceptions and like yeah. you can go from complete newbie never heard of this to like you know high level raw food expert you know really way quicker than ever yeah. before with all these resources realistically like within i mean they say it takes you know uh 
whatever it is. Like some people say 30 days to change your habit, to create a new habit. But I mean, yeah, within a month's time, you could definitely be at like pro level following some of these uh, recipes and, and digging into some of the research and the, and the different presentations that are in here. Man, you will know so much. Exactly. And um, what was it with, uh, ah, it slipped me, darn it, whatever the case is. Yeah, it was something to do with the bundle. Um, oh, y y yeah, Angelica's yin yoga. Yes. I used, yes. I used to That's be like, awesome. ah, yin yoga, I don't want to lay there and just hold a pose for three minutes. You probably don't even get that big of a workout, bro. Yin yoga is so legit. needed in our life. Yeah. It's legit. Because it's hard to not fidget, yeah. to sit still yeah. or be in that child's pose or whatever it may be and not fidget yeah. and move for three to five minutes. That's another powerful thing for our mind. And, and oh my gosh, so that's if, something if there that was. If there was a yoga that would help prepare you for giving up, you know, like old food choices and embarking upon like a healthier raw food journey yin would be it because it, it, yeah. it does it asks you to sit with discomfort and just breathe with it and to go into it and release it and so often that's exactly what it is and coming coming off of old foods you know yeah. products right it's like yeah. it, what is that i'm feeling is it like what's going on what like what do i actually need is this thing i'm craving actually going to give me what i need is this moving out of this pose going to give me what i need or is sitting and growing through this to get to that that new level of comfort gonna actually get me in that direction and it's like yeah, yeah we can learn so much i think that i mean really you could take any two products mm -hmm. out of this bundle and they're worth the bundle couple them together they're worth the bundle alone easy Absolutely. In yoga, i i have a, a live with angelica here coming up and She's such an amazing teacher and she's got a really, I mean, this is what she's dedicated her life to really. And it's really opened my mind. And I love how eloquently you put that exactly like sitting through growing through the discomfort can really help us evolve and kind of make, uh, come to realizations and cut ties with certain things that maybe aren't serving us because we are slowing down enough to be still. Yeah. Right. And just, and just be, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, I, my whole, my whole world has changed this last year from doing some yin yoga. I'm like, this is, this is what the world needs. Like kids need this in school every day, some yin yoga, yeah. like just 15 minutes of yin. Cause yeah. it's really, it's like a form of a meditation in a way <laughs> can yeah. be, and it's definitely uncomfortable. Yeah. Like you think like, I don't, what are you doing? Just laying on the floor. You're just holding still. No, it is no. hardcore. <laughs> it is, man. I tell you most, most people, I mean, athletes really need it. I, you know, I, when I, I found yoga before raw food, but all of the yoga that I really focused on was more kind of a yang style, you know, like kind of yeah. more like, you know, yeah. I did lots of power and Kundalini is pretty intensive and getting yeah. the pump in and, right. you know, and after a while as, like man i'm like everything i do like i'm beating myself up skateboarding i'm going hard and working i'm going to the gym like yeah. bring some balance in and yeah. and yeah yin it's it's amazing it really does help bring so much balance yeah. and slow you down and more restorative and you like get the get the joints like strengthened and flexible at the same time and it's uh yeah, yeah. That's, that's and awesome most, course. most courses like are at least 50 dollars, if not like three to five hundred yeah. dollars Right. Or even just going to a yoga class. So yeah. here you've got her course, yeah. 50 bucks. Yeah. And, you know, you have 39 other products from people, yeah. you know, I mean, it's just, it's my, I feel like in a lot of ways too, it can be overwhelming for the average individual. Like, wait, is this even real? Like, what is the catch? What are you trying to sell me? Is What is this? You know, is it even really worth that much? But when you dig in, like, I'm going to be selling my course after this is over for $67. Yep. Like, that's, I'm like, it's worth 67 easy. bucks. It's worth it, you know, easy. so. You could, you could sell it for 100 easy. You could sell it for more. You could sell it for 150, 200 easy. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you, if you think about it too in another way, right, it's like, you could go out to a raw restaurant by yourself once right. and eat, like, I, I've gone to raw easy. restaurants and spent 60 to 100 bucks on myself with totally. one dinner. Yeah. Or. You could learn how to make food that's better than any raw restaurant I've Way ever better. been to. Way you know, better. Maybe, there may be, maybe actually there's one, Pure Food and Wine, ever, you know, Bad Vegan. That was an amazing raw restaurant, but I'm not even kidding. I think still yeah. the vast majority of the recipes are better than even their best stuff. 
Yep. For 50 bucks. I agree. Plus, for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. You can start and then you a raw restaurant if you want. Yeah. You're totally, you could open up a raw restaurant. We need more raw restaurants. And of course, yeah. raw restaurants don't do the greatest because you aren't getting very much food. It's super high fat. You're not feeling full and satiated. That's why I feel like a lot of these places shut down. They're trying to hit the, the I, in a way like, yeah, the, the population just isn't really ready for it. But man, I know exactly. We've been to so many raw food restaurants. And when we go to LA, I told Lisa, I'm like, I'm over it. I don't even want to go to these restaurants anymore. Like we go to, some of them, they have the, the energy is like you're, your weight, you're putting, you're putting them out. Like the, the actual um, help, the clientele, the, the servers make you feel like you're wasting their time. And I'm like, you know what? I don't need this. Like I could make something so awesome on my tailgate. Yeah. Like, why am I going to drop 80 bucks here when you're, yeah. you know, treating me like this, or it's taking you an hour to get me my food. Come on. It's raw food. You know? Yeah. I I've been, it's really hard to impress me with raw food restaurants yeah. having the, the, having the recipes that we tap into, we're, we always, we always, of course we enjoy it, but we compare, we're like, ah, I don't know, was this worth 40 bucks? Like, I don't know, like, I don't feel the greatest. There have been some things that have been amazing, 100%, but most of the time, I'm just not, I'm not impressed, man. Most, most of the time, it's just nut coma and- yeah, Nut coma. It's, it's nut coma and just yeah. feeling like, wow, why did I, like, I spent so much and like, don't get me wrong. I, I've, I've been to raw restaurants where I enjoyed it for sure. Yeah. It was a good time. I will I still like, go. Yeah, yeah I, I don't regret go. it. And I'm not going to say I'll never go. But I, 99% of the time, I'd way rather eat either my food or the foods that are in the bundle. And it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really yeah. a cut above in terms of how you feel and also like authentic tastes and textures. You know, it's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, you're saving so much money. It is nice to go. We'll, we'll always go to different raw restaurants because we want to support them and we want to have some different stuff sometimes. But, man, you can save so much money and you can like we we literally make better tasting stuff, fresher filling like you feel good. You're not in a nut coma right on the tailgate of our truck in the parking lot of the grocery store. You know, like. <laughs> It's yeah. the best, man. You, you have some really, really fun videos on that too, hey? Yeah, we do. We have some fun. We're more to come. Like, I've decided just recently after putting out these, these videos on YouTube, because I've got two going out a day, one kind of like talking about common struggles of, you know, questions that we get asked and stuff over the years, a playlist series of the com common struggles on a raw vegan diet. And then I've got another playlist that I've been putting out a video every day of what we ate in a day from the raw vegan bundle. And so I've made it a decision. I'm like, I need to really commit and become in a serious relationship with YouTube because yeah. I love creating YouTube videos. And so this year is going to be really fun. We want to do way more stuff yeah. on YouTube and really showcase are shopping and making like a quick lunch right in the parking lot. Like it's 110 degrees out. You're like sweating and you're just making lunch on your, on the, tr on the trunk of your car or where, whatever vehicle you drive or whatever, just make it happen. And it's like, it's so cheap. We've made salads, massive, delicious salads in these bowls for under $5 each. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean? You go to Subway, probably like, the most variety of vegetables that you could get real quick at a fast food restaurant or something and it's going to be like ten dollars and it's going to be pathetic it's going to be this tiny little pathetic thing you know you don't get any of the dressings because all the dressings have the oil you know we're like give us lemon juice and pepper you know for yeah. our dressing Done. But you, yeah but you can make a better salad for yourself when you have tools that you keep with you in your car that's why i put also in my kitchen course the whole tool travel tools section nice. of what we keep with us in the vehicle at all times so that way we we can go anywhere in the world we could go to airbnb or go camping we have everything that we need to make our food you know yeah, and it doesn't have to world, be complicated right it doesn't have yeah. to be complicated it doesn't have to be hard it doesn't have to take long it doesn't right. have to cost a lot of money right. and of right. course you can go the other way and, and you know do stuff that's fancy or, or splurge and make yeah. some crazy stuff with exotic ingredients right. but like really all, all one needs, I feel like, is a knife, a cutting board, a fork, bowl, a bowl, maybe a peeler. A peeler's pretty handy, but yeah. that's it. Like, this is yeah. all a raw vegan needs. You could travel the world with this and be, like, busting out everywhere you go. Got to gotta create, like, um, a, a backpack that is those things combined together, just like a little turtle shell. You know, I love it. Like, <laughs> I've thought about it, bro, because, yeah, I've, I've, like, shoved the bowls in, and I'm shoving different containers around. 
taking our knife up on this mountain, cutting mangoes up there. You know, but you know, the, course, the baby bird. Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh man, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this has been awesome, bro. I know we could sit here and, and chit chat for like hours. I, no, I forgot no we were problem. doing the live. I thought we were just hanging out. Yeah, pretty much that's what we're just doing, <laughs> hanging out. Hopefully we've answered the questions if some questions have been coming in. Yeah. But yeah, this has been awesome. It's always great to connect. I know it's, it's crazy how fast time goes because I know we yeah. said it last time, we need to connect more. And yeah. we say that to other people in the bundle when we do the lives, we're like we should do this more. Like, why aren't we doing this throughout the year? Just to go live and just shoot the shoot the breeze and answer questions and just talk. Yeah. So we'll have to try to make it a point to get on and, and do more and more absolutely. often. We really do. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely. It's kind of funny because I was just thinking about that earlier. Um, <clears throat> in, I think the only reason I have resistance ever is I don't like putting stuff on a schedule. But as soon as I actually do it, it's, it's, it's fun. It's amazing. It's uplifting. It, it, it yeah. reconnects you. You know, it like re-reminds you and you, you share inspiration, right? Yeah. And it's like... I don't know, it's really funny about the schedule thing, right? But yeah. I was thinking, man, like, I'd like to do at least a live a month. Yeah. And I was like, a live a month? Like, that's not much. Like, a live not a much. week would probably be more, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> and in a way, like, when we think of all you guys who are tuning in, like, when we think of the audience that are, are, are thirsty and craving the, the same kind of interaction. Maybe they're driving somewhere. I know for me personally, like when I see that you're going live with somebody or maybe you're going live by yourself or someone else that I follow is, is doing something. I love listening and just, you know, I'm like shopping. I can't interact. I can't ask questions, but I can listen. Mm -hmm. And so I know same thing. Like, I'm like, why am I not filming a what I eat in a day video every single week, at least once a week? Like, it's so simple. Why am I not doing this? I need to do this. Yeah. So that's where, yeah, like, you got to make the decision to schedule it in and, and listen, and I both have the most amazing schedule, yeah. but we're like still not following certain things. Cause we're not like, like we got to get our exercise in yeah. like three times a week. Let's sweat it out. Mm -hmm. So when you schedule it, you know, you're more likely to show up for it. But of course, when we have something in with another person, that's why I feel like people like to enroll into a course or something is because they're kind of held accountable like oh i've got to be there i paid for this course and it's at five o'clock i got to show up you know but yeah i feel you sometimes it's cool just to flow yeah. but man i know hit me up anytime you know we can figure out a time too and and hop on and shoot the breeze answer some questions and you know just interact with the audience and, and i love hanging out with you and we yeah i think if us, you know, after the bundle, the uh, the post bundle party, we we, we start yeah. setting something up where we just, yeah, yeah. Just, we, we 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 lit a fire under everyone to yeah. try and bring the community together to do this yeah. once a year, you know, yeah. and that, at least we do once the same a year. thing and go, hey, let's let's light a fire and just be a little bit more active with some more often yeah. lives, you know, we could we could. I mean, a year goes by in like three months, anyways, right? Mm -hmm. So, like. We'll be doing this again in like three months. Yeah. What it'll feel like three months. But yeah, I know the the sheet. I feel like that might be kind of cool to keep the sheet to where we, you know, can just tap in. I don't know. Maybe we could start something, you know, separate from the bundle. But you know, people have access to. We can tap in and connect and put the schedule. I don't know. Whatever. We'll we'll we'll, we'll wrap we'll on. It. I think that's we'll uh, figure it out. Yeah. I think it's a good thing to wrap on. If it's if it's in both of our minds and hearts, then obviously there's yeah. reason to bring it up again. So yeah. And I know like for me as a, as an individual, I, I crave the, the watching, you know, some of my, you know, favorite people in, in certain niches get together and do a like, you know, I, I, I'm big into, you know, mountain biking or backpacking and certain people that I follow. I'm like, oh my gosh, these two are going live together. It's like so amazing. I do not want to miss it. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, it's, it's something that, you know, we got to keep in mind because sometimes, yeah, we think like, oh, you know, who's going to want to, you know, listen to me talking about how awesome blending up celery and mango is, but you know, it reminds them, Hey, maybe I should blend up some celery and mango today. Yeah. It's delicious. Celery mango is pretty damn good, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Sweet and salty. Oh, so yeah. good. <laughs> next, right next on. to mango tomato, but I like mango celery too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mango celery. And then of course the, uh, I got from you the celery date stick, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Like, I never put that combo together. That is such a bomb combo, bro. Like killer for traveling. I love how you showed it, like going on the plane. I was like, yeah. light bulb moment. Oh, that makes perfect sense. That's so easy to bring. Like celery does pretty good for the travel. It'll last oh, yeah. a day out of the fridge, no problem. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you've got your dates that, that you know, 
do sweet, salty, crunchy, watery, like crispy, delicious. Condensed and, and really filling. It's amazing how filling it can be for small volume, but yes, yeah. yeah, that's a yeah. filling. That's yeah, my you, travel know, you feel like a champion when you're at the airport and doing something like that because there's nothing yeah. at the airport. Not nice. one thing. Yeah. You can spend so much. I've been in the airport and spent 30 bucks on just enough juice to have a meal, you know, like. Yeah, right. Yeah. Totally. It's so expensive. I know Jerry Seinfeld had a bit. It's been like 20 years ago when he came out with it. But he's like, he's like, what's up with the airports? He's like, you know, they'll be like, yeah, $12 tuna fish sandwich. We think that's, you know, fair. Like, you know, what, where, where do they know the prices of things in the world? But, you know, they, no. they got you. They oh, yeah. got, they got you. you. They're, they, where are you going to go? Yeah. You know, you're, you're bound. So that's where it's cool to know certain tricks. And that's, yeah. So well, that's another great thing about, you know, people sharing. Cause I wouldn't have seen that if, if I didn't watch you at the airport, bringing your celery and dates. And I was like, Oh dude, I'm totally, I'm doing, I'm taking that. That's a killer tip. Every time I go on a plane, every time, bro, I'm always bringing celery and dates. Love it, brother. So good. It's yeah. like, um, yeah. Airports, movie theaters and sports events. They, mm -hmm. they gotcha. And like, I, yeah. I used to, I used to hide beers in my shirt. Now I'm just hiding like bags of grapes and dates and celery. You know, it's like. It's nice now. I feel like, well, our movie theater here in Las Vegas, we got a couple of them. They don't care. You could bring in a bag full of food, your own food if you want. So we, we go stacked with, with like delicious munchies and then we bring our own spritzer water in and it's awesome. I love, I love watching John. John brings a, a banana box full of food on the plane. It's so <laughs> yep. awesome. It was so awesome. I know he just got back from a trip and he, he, he did a post, you know, he's bringing back, I can't remember what kind of plants they were, yeah. uh, but he had like a box full of, you know, plants. And I'm like, bro, how many sideways looks did you get? Probably there's people, pilots and, you know, attendants that have, they will never see that in their life ever. Just the one. And, you know, that definitely you stand out, yeah. um, but you just make it happen. Like what's important to us, we're going to find a way, you know, ask. That's why I love too. like, Ask the restaurants. That's a really big thing. Like, hey, I'm, I'm coming in with a group of people. I'm actually on a raw food diet. What can you make for me that's oil free? Mm -hmm. um, you know, or could I bring in my own dressing? Sometimes the chefs are just, they love it. They're like, yeah. oh my gosh, a raw vegans coming in. Okay, I need to, they're getting their books out. They're trying to figure out how to do something amazing that's oil free. So being vocal is really helpful too. Like letting people know, hey, absolutely, I'm on a, I'm doing the raw vegan i'm doing a raw vegan diet right now can you help me this way or that way right you know yeah so fun did like, i ever tell chefs you they'll come food. out too and they'll be like so what'd you think and, you know and other people in the restaurant are looking like whoa the chef's coming out talking to these people are these famous people or something <laughs> yeah we're doing raw <laughs> movies, you know <laughs> no they're just pains in the ass no yeah <laughs> but did, did i ever tell you about my experience on a disney cruise no no i went i went on a walt disney cruise with my family whoa and um you know, lunch, breakfast was easy because they had tons of buffets yeah, and lots of fruits. Things. And it wasn't always yeah. the best quality, but it was decent. And decent. I'd, I'd grab stuff and I'd even ask them, hey, can you blend this? They'd bring me, make me a smoothie. It was great. Nice. nice. The first dinner came along. It was like a week long. And I was sitting there and I was like looking at the menu and I noticed like, oh, on the menu, there's honeydew and there's like tomatoes. And like they came over and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Like I'm on a, a bit of a different diet. I'm just wondering, can I just get like a big plate of honeydew and like a, a plate of tomatoes and an avocado for dinner? And yeah. They're like, you know what? Wait a second. We'll get a chef. And I'm like, okay. And so chef came out and he's like, hey, so like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm on a raw food diet. And he's like, oh, my sister was on a raw food diet. I'll be your chef the whole week. And so he was my chef the whole week. Every Because on that cruise, you'd, you'd go to different dinner ballrooms every single night. Yeah. And he followed me. He was yeah. the chef just for me. And he made me three course full raw meals every night. Bro. And I mean, it wasn't quite bundle. Sure. But it was damn good. But it was, oh, I mean, better than eating buffet, you know, fruit for, for every meal. And I told him, I, like, I want to start every dinner with fruit. So he'd like, one night he made me like a, like a melon mint soup to start. And then like, had like a lasagna and had like a salad and like, but yeah, it, it was pretty crazy. I know if I was a chef, I would really appreciate that because it breaks you out of the mundane everyday, just run of the mill stuff that you're making. You're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, I, it, it helps them pull out their creative side because they're chefs. That's yeah. what they do. They're creators. Yeah. So when you can let them know, hey, look at I, I'd like no oil and then your raw food. What can you do? Yeah. 
And, you know, of course, like here in Vegas, if we go to like um, uh, True Food or whatever, we'll call them and, you know, be like, hey, we're coming in Thursday. And, you know, and they're like, oh, you guys, right? And then they always come out to the table. Yeah. How do you like it? You know, and yeah. of course, yeah, it's like you're saying, it's not bundle. It's not bundle yeah. status, homemade, amazing, <laughs> but it's, it's better than, um, yeah. you know, say, eating something that you're, it, that's the thing. I feel like you got to be comfortable enough to at least voice yourself and yeah. just let them know, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing. You know, can, is there anything you can do for me? Or if not, can you, you know, is there, can I get a salad there and bring my own dressing in? I know one restaurant you were in, you did it a story where you're like, yo, they wouldn't let me in. I have to eat my orange out here or whatever, right? So yeah. not yeah. every place. It can happen. But, it can happen. but I mean, yeah. what a life skill to be able to be okay with a little bit, being a little uncomfortable, you know, and to, to voice your needs, you know, and yeah. to feel like secure in doing that. Like, yeah, it's not easy the first couple of times you do it, but that can have carry over into the rest of your life and can right. really, really embolden you embolden you and bring more confidence and at the same time too it it, it shines a brighter light on what you're doing and makes it right. more attractive to other people you know we went to this um we went to this um re not a retreat it was a awesome what do you call it um in, in mexico it was in mexico i'm like i don't know why i'm it's um you know, like all inclusive. What do you call those when there's the hotel and there's all the food? A resort. I, yeah. I'm like, why am I like missing the word? It was an all inclusive resort in yeah. Mexico. Lisa was doing a photo shoot for a wedding there. And this yeah. is when we first got together, it was in 2018. Mm -hmm. And all the chefs got to know us because we were the, we were those people that just ate the vegetables and the fruit, right? Like, yeah. you know, in the morning time, we would take half the tray of papaya, you know? So we would let them know at dinner, like they got to know us because we were the only people who ate the raw food. And it was cool because we were getting special treatment because they want the experience to be amazing for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so cool because we, people were like, what are they having over there? Right. And, yeah. you know, cause we're like, we got this, I'm like, Hey, can I just get like three cucumbers? Cause you know, sometimes they don't give you a lot. They're like, Oh, you just no. want cucumber. They give you like a half of a cucumber cut up. You're like, no, no, no. I need like four. We're like, we're, you know, we don't speak Spanish very fluently, so we're getting out our, our translator. You know, we're like, you know, frutas, muy grande, salada, you know, like, you know <laughs> yeah, you know. So well, I showed them the bowl. I'm like, can you make us a salad in this bowl? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I don't yeah. want this little tiny. Like we need more volume. But by the end of the or middle of the trip, it, we, you know, like it's not like we were doing it for attention or anything, but we yeah. got like man, five-star uh, attention and service because we had the, we, we just, you know, we were friendly and they, they wanted us to be, have the greatest experience. And, and we, we felt like royalty, really, because they would come out and they wanted to see if you liked it, you know, what they prepared for you for the, and, you know, of course, we'd go back to certain restaurants at the resort. It was so, it was just so much fun. And we felt amazing. Like we had so much fun because we were, eating what we wanted to eat. And we, we probably were eating like 2,800 calories or 3,000 calories mm. because we had just an abundance of fruit, you know, like Mexico, the fruit was amazing. So they good. had just bowls of sour sop. We're just yeah. like, you know, oh my God, like, you know, sour sop every morning. Just like, yeah, it was so awesome, man. It was so much Mexico fun. So, yeah. yeah. Top notch fruit. Yeah. And yeah. I've had similar experience. I remember uh, on those same lines being, I can't remember, it was actually Florida with my family and we were going out for dinner and um, I was chopping up papaya, no, actually it was Hawaii. And I was chopping up a whole papaya and a whole pineapple. And I just put it in a plastic bag, you know, and just like kind of roughly kind of mush it into a bit of a salad dressing. Yeah. And we ended yeah. up going to a, a Bubba Gump um, restaurant. And I just was like, hey, like, can I just order a giant salad? And I just want loads of tomatoes and, and stuff like that. And so they brought out the salad, but then I asked him if I could use my dressing and I, I dumped my dressing on top and people around us started asking literally like, can I have that? Like, what, what is that? Can I have that? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, man. Oh my gosh. We actually would go through this drive through in Oregon. It was called Casablanca and it was a great drive through. They're still there. I think they've got two, maybe even three locations in Southern Oregon now. It's just a small little mom and pop style, like a, salads and burritos and tacos and espresso and smoothies you just drive through you could also walk up and order too but we started to order 
a certain way, we would get the house salad, which was just, it would come with cheese. So we'd say no cheese. Yeah. Then it had like tomato, tomatoes, shredded carrots, cabbage, um, mixed greens, and um, uh, dandelion greens, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're like, all right, we'll get the house salad. You know, we'll add like the fresh pico de gallo, you know, a scoop of guacamole. And they got to know us to where we would just, we called it, you know, like, the uh, the raw salads we're like yo it's nate and lissa we'll take two raw salads and so they knew <laughs> like how to make us and it wasn't on the menu no but be because we were regulars we'd go they have like a vegan uh cashew ranch mm -hmm. and so we're like this is perfect sometimes we'd be out shopping and we're like let's just go to casablanca you know and yeah. have a salad there so that can be something that's really cool to do too in your area mm -hmm. is get to know certain people and ask them mm -hmm. you never know some people might really I mean, they want your business, they, yeah. you know, and they have the food, they want to sell the food, right? So yeah. you can just let them know, hey, that's it, you know, that's yeah. it, man, like, really realizing that when you're going to those places, like, they're, they're in the service industry, right? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like, you don't have to be afraid to ask them for stuff, you know, and you don't have to feel bad about it, right? You know, uh, exactly. Yeah. A lot of times they can have a lot of fun doing it, too. Yeah, Absolutely. man, it's so awesome. We got to connect again. I don't think we Absolutely. have another live through the uh, through the the bundle. Maybe we'll connect DM and I can host you and we can you know dig in a bit more. Talk about your stew book, do this book. Yeah, bro. it's awesome. I'm so stoked to have that Cravings Thanks, Busters. Buddy. Like like I said, we've had three of the meals so far, and it's like your your dude. I mean, your meals are always amazing. Your dressings and stuff are always amazing. We always Appreciate love them. And that's what that's what this bundle is so amazing once a year right mm -hmm. like oh for anybody who is on the fence yeah tap in fresh inspiration watch, right go watch the video at least yeah. that video Lisa made it was that not the coolest insane Bro, yeah absolutely she's still Actually, all day that reminds me of something that i want to do uh, but i'm not yeah. going to say it out loud so yeah. okay yeah Dude, yeah, she spent like all day long on that video. It's such a great thing to go check out the video for those who are watching. Go watch the video at least and you can see how to download. You can see a bit more about it. I know my whole focus through this bundle was like, okay, I need to really focus on being as annoying as I can. Because <laughs> sometimes we can feel like, oh, I've been talking all about the bundle nonstop. But man, you know, it's always a bummer afterwards when people are messaging being like, I missed it. And you're like, ah, oh, I've been talking about it for like 11 days straight. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. Well, when, it, when it's one of those things, right, that like to you is such a no brainer yeah. and you know how yeah. huge of a freaking impact it can have in someone's life. And, you know, like the stuff we talked about, how it's like it's less than going out to a restaurant one night or like you would have spent more on a party weekend getting wasted. And this oh, could yeah. enliven you for the rest of your life. This could ripple out to your family. This could ripple out to your friends. This could like literally change your entire, your entire lineage. It's crazy. Right. So, um, I can't really overstate it. You know, I can't, and I, I, I'm not going to feel bad about saying, check out the bundle. If you haven't checked it out, you know, go yeah. to, go to run Addy Nate's profile, give him a click, give him a follow. If you aren't grab the bundle, check it out on mine, whatever you like, mm. check out the lives. If you don't want to buy it, then, then enjoy all these lives. And I, I hope you've got yeah. a lot of information and you've enjoyed just chilling and hanging with us. You know, it's a, it's lots of fun to share and we yeah, all grow a, together, right? That's another really cool thing is, is being able to go to the website and see the live event schedule because just the live event schedule, I mean, realistically, that's worth the $50 in itself right there, but that's all bonus. That's like complimentary free, yeah. you know, I mean, because we're all on Instagram. Nobody has to pay, you know, to come to these things or whatever. But yeah, man, it's really just a fun event for, for all of us. And yeah, I, I really, I can only imagine that, you know, people tapping in are hopefully getting some seeds planted and watered and they're starting to really sprout and take off through mm -hmm. these lives and seeing, you know, what, what, what's possible on a raw vegan diet well, man it's amazing we're, we're we're definitely giving the opportunity to have you know like the absolute best like trays mm -hmm. and, and coconut and like lights yeah. and like like yeah. it's all set up you know it's just all like all right up. am i gonna make the movement yep. and, and and go towards it yeah it's fail proof man it yeah. is such a fail proof system yeah like just follow that's the thing is like you know when you buy a book sometimes you just you're like oh cool i've got that book but the biggest part to like is, yeah, you got to open it, implement the book, like try something. Mm. And like, you know, listen, I are saying, cause some people are like, I'm overwhelmed. Or it's like, just, just find one recipe 
Yeah. Just make one recipe. Start there. If yeah. you don't do a lot of raw food stuff, it can be overwhelming. Yeah. But just try one recipe, smoothie, a stew. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. hand salads might be a bit a bit over the top because maybe somebody doesn't have a dehydrator. So there's a lot of other really simple, basic, you know, uh, tools that you need for making a lot of these. A knife and a cutting board, man. Yeah. Like when I think, what does a raw vegan need? A knife and a cutting board, that's it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. Super, super cool. Well, so much well, love, brother. brother. Let's, my, uh, my let's, let's, let's wiggle our fingers behind the scenes and, uh, yeah. you know, make some more of these dreams come true. And definitely. I just want to, want to thank you, brother, for all, all the love and, uh, and for all the energy and you put into this. I know your course is like next level and I've, I've seen you behind the scenes a little bit with that uh, and watched thanks. a little bit of it inside. And thanks, I think it's man. going to really help people take their game to the next level a thousand so. percent. I hope so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hey, and, uh, you know, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> and, also, <laughs> and also with you. Uh, love you guys. <laughs> love you, Chris. Thank you, brother. Thanks, brother. Thanks so much, everyone. See you guys again live tomorrow. Have an awesome night, brother. You too, day. man. Sleep well. Sleep Thank well. You. Have a great day. Yeah, you have a great night. Bye-bye. See you, everyone. Thanks so much.